all right good morning everyone welcome back i think we are at class seven maybe eight uh, but um this morning we are starting our look at social media and social media marketing um so we're going to start with social media this morning and then we're going to look at uh we're going to go into intro to social media marketing and then we're going to finish social media marketing on monday with a very very special guest like i told you guys i have double confirmation now okay so hopefully everything goes well and we will have inspector sean j mitchell here with us on monday he's the head of digital communications for the jcf and he's going to come and tell us about how he came up or, or how his team came up with their current marketing strategy which seems to be very effective because a lot of people they're talking about it and um how he was able to use language messaging and culture in his digital marketing strategy to connect with people who usually feel disconnected from uh, established government agencies, especially uh, uh, um, a law enforcement apparatus. And in that way, I think their strategy has been immensely effective. And so he's going to talk to us about that on Monday. But today we also have a special guest. Uh, Talika is back with us again today. She's feeling better. And she is, I am breaking up. I am breaking up, guys. Not hear me? Well, you're fine. You're fine. I'm hearing. Okay, guys. Audio is gone. Carolyn, or fine. Fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Guys, if I'm breaking up for you, you can exit and try coming back. It may be an internet issue. Okay. All right, so Telika will be here with us today. So uh, she will join us at 11. So we have to get through what we need to get through by then. So let's start. All right. Guys, I'm thinking about pausing the chat because I find that people are having side conversations in the chat while um, lessons are going on. And I'm not sure how productive that is um but let's see what happens today all right let's share screen they're very productive for who if you're paying attention to what is happening in the chat and not what is being taught i don't see how that can be productive and it is distracting for people who have that chat keep popping up while they're well, well, my lessons are taught. So let, let's see what happens today, guys. Control your fingers, right? Um, there's a time for chat, uh, but let's keep it to a minimum, okay? Of course, I want you guys to participate. So if something I said, you want to, you know, drop a response or something, but the, 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 inter, the inter chat back and forth, guys, let's keep it to a minimum today, okay? All right, then, great. So, guys, let's talk about what is social media because a lot of us use social media. We're very familiar with social media. Well, we have basic knowledge of social media platforms. I wouldn't say we're very familiar, but we do have basic knowledge of social media platforms. But in, in, but in terms of a definition as to what social media is, it depends on who you ask. But there are certain general things that marketers um, agree on and there's a definition i used to use before but social media has evolved so much especially since covid and it continues to evolve and so i found another definition that i thought was a lot more nuanced and a lot more kind of touch on the complexity of social media because social media is not don't take it at face value is what i should say it's a lot more complex than we think but 
let's get into this definition. So social media employs mobile and web-based technologies to create highly interactive platforms via which individuals or end users like me and you and communities share, co-create, discuss, and modify content, user-generated content. So all of us who are creating content for social media, we're users. So we're, it's user-generated content. So the model of social media, um, depending on how that platform is structured, for the most part, all social media platforms allow for discussions, for networking, for community building, for sharing information, for collaborations, and to, 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 to publish content on the platform. So the, the, regardless of the type of content, all social media allows you to do that. But the reason why I prefer this is because we have been thinking of social media in a very narrow sense or in a very narrow way. So we think Instagram and Facebook and stuff, but there are other social media platforms that are not necessarily uh, multimedia based, right? But they do operate as social media platforms. And there's also a very heated debate about whether instant me messaging applications are also considered social media apps. So is WhatsApp social media? Is Facebook Messenger social media? Uh, so we, ha we are still unclear as to what category those fall in, or better yet, if they fall in the social media category or if they're a category by themselves. So let's break this word, let's break this definition down. So of course, it's mobile and web-based because most social media applications are actually web-based. So they have a website where you can go log in, access your profile, uh, look at other people's content, talk to other people, leave comments, like, share, all that good stuff, right? But they also, for the most part, all have apps, mobile apps that you can download on your smart devices. So your phone, your and your tablet, <clears throat> even in some cases, your smartwatch, right? Um, so they all have that dual component and it's for accessibility because sometimes you're not on um, a browser or better yet, sometimes because of how the app, the, the, the social media platform is structured, trying to access it on a phone browser will kind of minimize or diminish the user experience. And so it would have made sense to create an application um, that in many ways kind of enhances the user experience as well because for instance on Instagram you find that some of the things that you can do on the app the mobile app you cannot do on the desktop right but I think Instagram is an exception in that way because most other platforms what you can do on mobile you can do on desktop but yeah um, and of course, they're interactive platforms. And what does interactive mean? Well, social media is part of Web 2. And Web 2 um, is, of course, uh, an advance or an ev evolution of what was there before, which was Web 1, where um, a content creator posted the content and all we could do in terms of interacting with the content is read it. We couldn't respond to the content. We couldn't edit the content in any way. It was a one-way system where somebody posted something, maybe usually a university or a government agency or before the, 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 the interwebs became a thing. And all you could do was just look at the information, access the information. That's it. But then with, the, with, with Web2 coming on stream, you had more interactive platforms that not only allowed for you to interact with the content creator but also to add your own content or to add a comment or to share right and so uh social media became i think one of the biggest um communication channels modern communication channels to come out of web 2 right and that's where and and the interactivity is a main feature of most web 2 platforms especially social media right 
And what can you do in terms of interacting? As I said already, you can build communities uh, around people who you and them share the same special interest. Um, you can share information, you can co-create, you can collaborate, you can have discussion forums. Um, as well, you can create, share, and modify user-generated content. And modify in this sense is like look at a TikTok where you're allowed to do it, do it or you're allowed to stitch or you're allowed to do a review. So you're not modifying the original content necessarily. You're probably adding to it or you're clipping it to add it into your content, etc. right? So that's what we mean by modify in this sense, right? Now with a different definition like this, it takes a lot more platforms into consideration other than just the ones that we know or are used to, right? Uh, so let's talk about social media channels, right? There's a ton of them out there. There, can I say thousands of social media channels? Uh, we have only been exposed to a few because of access, that's one, and two, because of habit. So um, we're only used to Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, the big five, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, and now I, I'd say TikTok. YouTube is not a social media channel proper, although it has elements of social of, of interactivity on, on, on the platform. YouTube is actually a search engine, um, but people call it a social media and it's fine, but technically it is a search engine, right? And so you have different types of social media platforms out there. Um, and the key, the key to unlocking growth on these platforms is an understanding of how these platforms work. We have been very surface in how we approach social media. So we know Instagram is there. We kind of basically know that you post videos and images on Instagram. You add a little caption, you add a little hashtag. And our knowledge doesn't really extend beyond that. Like, what are some of the features of Instagram? How the algorithm works? What are the analytics and how you can use the analytics? How to, how to unfollow people, how to restrict somebody from commenting on it. So, so there are a lot of technical details about these platforms that we have not really taken the time to kind of understand. And so we find that we, we tend to keep doing the same thing over and over again without expanding on these platforms. And sometimes that can inhibit our growth on these platforms, right? So... Let's look at some of the types of social media platforms um, or social media channels that there are. So we have, and, and depending on the kind of platform or the, the kind of platform determines how you use that platform. So depending on what you want to do or what your objectives are for using this particular communication channel, then that will determine which channel you use or how you use a channel. So you have multimedia channels. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok. And by multimedia, what I, what I mean is they allow you to upload all sorts of content. So it can be text only, like Facebook. You can only put, you can come, you can post a comment on Facebook. Uh, on Instagram, you can, um, well, Instagram is really now is moving towards a video base, but you could post images before. And of course, you could add your captions and hashtags and stuff. You can post stories. Um, LinkedIn, you, you can post articles. You can post just text, videos, images. Uh, Facebook, you can post anything on that. Um, Twitter, it's really text-based. But you can add videos, you can add images. So this is what we mean by multimedia. Multiple different forms of media can be shared on these platforms. So depending on what the objective is, um, say, for instance, you have a brand that is highly visual because you may have a product, right? And so people need to see the product. You may choose an Instagram. A lot of people, uh, since I've been doing this course, 
everybody has i've never seen one group who has not chosen instagram as their main social media platform even when it may not be the best platform and i think it's because of just what we know right so of course you're gonna go to instagram and you're gonna post pictures of your product you're gonna talk about the product you're gonna have people engage around that right or if you are if you are not a highly visual brand maybe you don't have a product but maybe you have a service then maybe a linkedin depending on where your audience is or twitter may be more suitable for you or if you are in one of the traditional fields like law or um science or politics or so maybe facebook is a better platform for you to be on so it really depends right so that, that that's multimedia uh platforms let's look at another type so the curation or the bookmarking social media channels of course we're talking about channels like pinterest now again pinterest is not necessarily technically pinterest is more of a search engine however over the years pinterest has been moving steadily towards a more social based search engine kind of like a youtube because now you can add stories to pinterest um you can um leave well you could have always left comments but um it's, it's starting to look more like a social media platform than a curation bookmarking platform and what do we mean by curation and i'll give you an example based on how i use pinterest so say i'm building a website or uh trying wanting to create a particular piece of content and i need ideas in terms of graphic design ideas the first place i go is pinterest i type in a search term or a key term i get the results i scroll through i find designs that i like and i'm able to bookmark those designs or pin those designs to a particular folder on my on my on my page right and so that's what we mean by curation because you are curating content that may not be yours is more than like is not your content so you're looking through to find that content you curate that content for inspiration motivation whatever and you bookmark it so that's that's what we mean by curation slash bookmarking right um but you'll find that there's a lot of information on pinterest as well so people people who have blogs will um pin um graphics on pinterest and when you click on the graphic it takes you back to the blog so um recipe for uh pumpkin soup let's say rank recipe for pumpkin soup you will create a pin for pinterest puts on your profile and then if somebody goes to pinterest to type in recipe for pumpkin soup your pin pops up and they click it it takes you to that blog on your website that you can find recipe you find the recipe right so a lot of bloggers use pinterest a lot of graphic artists and designers um uses a pinterest as well right um so that's curation and bookmarking then you have forums slash community based social media platforms so we're talking about discord and quora now a lot of people go quora is a social media platform actually technically yes it is a social media platform because if we go back to the definition of social media and we saw it where it says it's a place for discussion and for sharing that is what you do on a platform like core you ask a questions questions are asked and other persons can contribute to the answer to that question or share answers to that question now who uses a platform like Quora? well if you are a subject matter expert like a digital marketer social media manager scientist doctor whatever you can use quora um, you can you can use Cura to attract a, a target audience to 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 bring people over to your other platforms. So, say for instance, somebody asks a question like, um, "Guys, I'm trying to post X on Instagram, but I'm getting this error message. Anybody knows how to blah blah blah?" I, as an Instagram expert, will answer that question. Of course, my name is there, my handles are there, whatever. I answer that question 
you can vote for whether or not that question was useful, that answer was useful, one. And two, you can click on my profile, um, look at my bio, and go to my socials, right? So in that way, it's interactive, it's discussion-based, and it's community and network. You can use it to build your community and network as well. Discord is more of a private social media, meaning, because here's, here's where the discussion happens as well. Is social media necessarily public? Or can it be private? Now, let me tell you why I don't engage in that discussion. Because you had platforms like Clubhouse that was invitation only. And technically, you could think of that as a private social media, right? But it's still considered social media. And it's the same thing with Discord. Discord is an invitation-based social media. So I can create a Discord for my community and I send you an invitation to join my Discord community. And we do the same thing there. We can discuss, we can share content, we can like, we can comment. You can even do um, live sessions on, on Discord, although I think it's only audio-based live sessions you can do on Discord. You have different rooms and different channels and so it's, it's like Slack, right? Where it's invitation only. Um, you log on, but you is the same kind of social sharing, communicating, networking, discussion, content um, sharing platform, right? And so, but it's more community based. So Discord started with gamers. It's a place for gamers to go and geek out, right? about their games and because of how the platform is set up it became attractive to other people and now even companies have discord channels um that they will share with their community so if you want to so uh I, I don't i can't think of any company off the top of my head but you do have companies that have discord channels for fans or community members where you can go and you can discuss things and even get reward points and stuff like that right then we have publishing blog slash vlog platform so of course we're talking about medium i don't know how many you know medium but medium is good if you especially if you're a blogger or if you guys remember monday we talked about syndicated content where you are creating content for one platform, but you're sharing it on other platforms to expand the reach of that piece of content, and you're linking back to the original uh, platform, Medium allows you to do that. So with a Medium account, um, you can, um, the blog post that you had on the blog, you can turn it into a Medium post, or your LinkedIn article can be turned into a Medium post. Um, it's shared on media. media is a, Medium is a paid platform, people. Well, there's a free version and there's a paid version. With a free version, I think you only can read a certain amount of articles per month. But with the paid version, you can access hundreds of thousands of articles at any time. And it's also a way of getting you exposure as well, because you have authors who are on Medium, you have people with different interests on Medium, and what you can do is you can, um, you can follow certain people on Medium. So in that way, it's a social media site, because you can follow people on Medium, um, you can share their content, you can like their content, thumbs up, I think it's a thumbs up kind of thing, like their content, um, and you can have... You can comment and actually have exchanges on the platform, right? So in that way, it's a publishing platform where you can publish articles. So most articles, but of course, you can include media like image. I'm not sure if you can include video, but you can definitely include images in your, in your, in your post on Medium, right? And of course, vlog, when we're looking at vlog, that's where like a YouTube come in, but I wanted to talk about YouTube on the video audio only because you have some platforms that um, it's not necessarily multimedia, it's only one type of media. So Clubhouse is really audio based, right? Um, meaning you have different audio rooms that you can go in and you can have live conversations, but it's audio only. There's no video sharing necessarily. Don't know if that has changed, but as far as I know, it's still audio based. And I think that was the whole hype of the platform to begin with, where it's really just audio. Nobody had to dress up and put on a face. Uh, you can be anonymous behind um, that audio, right? 
and then on the other hand you have youtube which is only video based right um although youtube now has a community channel where you guys can have discussions back and forth in the main youtube is really is a video based platform video only um platform um and so you would think that this would limit the interactivity but it actually doesn't because there's a very thriving comment section on youtube sometimes too thriving um com comment section on youtube similarly with clubhouse you can jump into an audio conversation with your own audio and you can have your say in it as well and then finally we have interest-based social channels and I don't know how many of you have, 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 have ever, have ever, I don't know how many of you have ever heard, you see sometimes the Jamaican just slip in there, have ever heard of Goodreads. Now, Goodreads is a book, is a, it's a grand book, book club, pretty much it's a book club kind of channel where you can share your uh, favorite books, you can add books to your, 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 I think it's a bookshelf. You can add books to your bookshelf. You can share books with others. You can leave your review of books. You can find quotes about authors. And also, to, it's, it's a channel for book lovers. And it's somewhere where you can go to find other book lovers and you guys can discuss books, etc. And you can leave comments and people can respond to the comments. And that way, it is interactive. Okay, guys? So there are other types of social media channels there that would you would include them in a very broad definition of social media. But I think these are some of the main types of social media channels. So guys, you can expand outside of the multimedia channels and kind of explore these other platforms that you may find an audience on. Um, and you're, you may be leaving money on the table because you're not expanding out into these different platforms because you're really, you are boxing yourself in by only sticking to the popular um, types of social media platforms. Now, there is a document in the, in the group folder on Google Drive, and it's called Digital Marketing Channel Overview Sheet. I think that's what it's called but i i kind of deep dive the different social media so pros cons type best type of content for the platform how many persons are on the platform that kind of thing so i'm going to save us some time doing it in class right now because you already have that handout and you can go and check it out yourself right um okay so now i have kind of developed I have kind of developed, or I have my ideas around, guys, give me one minute, just one, one second, guys, don't go anywhere. Sorry about that, guys, I've been having people on my roof because i have a big east indian mango tree in my yard and i've been having people on my roof stealing my mangoes i've not been able to get any mangoes this season because people are just on my roof stealing my mangoes is it because i don't come outside i think people don't know that somebody live here um but yeah <laughs> i digress so guys so I have observed how we as Jamaicans use social media platforms and I have kind of developed some personas, but this, these are personas based on people who are using social media for some kind of monetization, business, um, branding kind of, um, branding, let's just leave it at that. So these are not um regular users these are persons who are using social media intentionally let's put it that that right so i'm gonna go through and i want you guys to tell me based on what i have said um based on what i said i want you to 
tell me if you recognize anybody based on the persona. So I want you to drop in the chat. I'm going to go through them one by one. And I want you to drop in the chat if you recognize anybody of this persona reminds you of... I'm going to stop requesting mangoes and pay attention. <laughs> um, last year, I had so much manga, guys. I would have gladly given you guys some. But I can't get any this year because them, them, they raid the tree and pick off the turn ones. So they don't even have a chance to write. All right, guys. So let's go through I see two questions in the Q&A. Rush, um, Rochelle Stanbury, that's a great question. I'm going to answer it shortly. Um, I don't think SoundCloud is a social media-based platform. I think um, SoundCloud is a, um, it's in the same category as a Spotify. Um, and Spotify is not a social media-based platform. Uh, well, how would you classify so I, I wouldn't classify SoundCloud as social media. I would classify it as a space where up-and-coming artists can share their music and get discovered. Um, I've, I'm, I, 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 I've not yet, I'm, I'm, I can't come up with a definition for Spotify and SoundCloud right now, but it's in the same, like Spotify, SoundCloud, what's that one that Jay-Z owns? Um, Google Music that kind of thing anyways guys so let me know if if who you think of when you hear about this person okay first one product focus so this this is a small business and this 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 business is prime primarily uses social media to market and promote their products or services with very little personal engagement except when they have gotten an award or when the owner has some kind of achievement there's been some achievement from the owner somebody on the team they will post that um but otherwise it's strictly a business profile they're only putting out their product and service the goal for them is to represent the sophisticated serious and competitive nature of the brand so they're not do the trends and the kind of thing because they don't want to be seen as gimmicky and they want and they're competing with big brands right and so they want to be taken seriously in the market and so they do use social media but they keep it strictly on a on that business level any brand come to mind any business come title thanks vanessa any business any brand come to mind that fits that persona that you guys see we're talking about local brands though so this is based on local uh this is based on a local business origin do i know origin somebody says origin okay let's look at origin origin is it origin brand i'm not finding origin where's origin origin why am i not finding that on my um is it origin culture is that what it's called origin brand okay origin there's literally nothing oh origin life backup account for origin life okay okay yeah so a lot of their content is going to be product based so they do uh they, they're, they have high resolution images of their products they're always marketing the marketing is always around their products very little engagement outside of their product except yeah yeah i can see that there are some elements of you know personal in there but yeah yeah my pick my pick was my pick was morgan's creek that was my pick. Morgan's Creek really only focuses on their products. They don't really deviate from that. Every now and again, you'll see something about the owner getting, I think she was a Scotia, Scotia Innovators. I think, is, is that what's called Scotia Innovators? The, the, she was in the paper recently as a part of the, the um, flair women in business thing. 
Right, so that's the only time you'll hear anything about the owner the, when they're posting achievements. Otherwise, strictly products. Strictly products. Coach and Vision Achievers, thank you. And their, their captions, they use their captions as product descriptions. Right? Compare this to a earth elements. Where earth elements flair distinguish women pull out yes thank you sandra compare that to our earth elements that has a lot of user generated content from their audience from their community they post a lot of videos with other people using their products um their captions are very light um it's a lot of inter communications and engagement style on there right so it's it's it's, it's a little less it's still a business it's, it's still earth elements the brand but it's far less formal right it's far less it's, it's far less um formal so um so that's the product focus they're serious they want it to be taken seriously they're a sophisticated brand they don't do foolishness okay they don't dabble in the foolishness okay all right so let's look at another let's look at the flip side to a small business like this the flip side is the personality focused small business or or small brand they primarily use social media to market their products and services but through relationship building and customer bonding what i'm talking let me know who you, who comes to mind or which brand comes to mind the goal for this business is to be perceived as friendly relatable cool right so posts are more relaxed incorporating trending sounds music and imagery to sell the persona of the brand as well as market the product so with a brand like this the you the the owner you're gonna see the owner a lot the owner is gonna be in a lot of the videos they're gonna show you behind the scenes they're gonna show you the owner packaging and shipping stuff and you're going to see that a lot and you're going to hear the, the trending sounds and maybe the dancing. You know, they're going to use, they, this brand use a lot more videos as opposed to the former brand who uses a lot more high-res images. This brand uses a lot more videos. Even their customer reviews tend to be video-based. Which brand comes to mind, guys? Bashko, Women's Marketing Code, Grace Food, Pepsi, Ragamuffin Cafe, Fontana, Digicel, 876 Water. Guys, we're talking about small businesses. Remember, small brands, businesses. Most of what you guys put here are not small brands or businesses. We're talking about small brands or businesses. The tree root, yes, the tree root. Jolie Fair, I'm not familiar with that. Rachel Lane, yes. All right, guys, so here's my pick. My pick was self-care Tiffany's. Look at that. Can you see that? Oh, butter, butter. So this is actually the owner using her own product. You hear the trending sound, you hear the music right so it's not just a boring video of somebody rubbing lotion on them foot but you, you, you have those other elements in there that kind of elevates it make it a lot more interesting etc oh jolly flair is china care hair care line or okay 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 so this is self-care tiffany's tiffany with the p-h-a-n-i-e-s I like this brand. I've used this brand. I think their products are amazing. Um, but I think this brand, she started out as a Morgan's Creek. She did start out serious, blah, blah, blah. But then over time, I think, uh, I think she adopted a different approach where it became a lot more personal, a lot more personality uh, based. And, and, and this is how, and this is how you, interact with your customers you you form relationships with your customers you bond with your customers because it's a less relaxed space it's somewhere where your customers feel a, 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 a little less rushed or pushed um and and the interaction is a lot um it's a lot less formal but don't get me wrong 
it's a proper proper business okay it's just how it's just the approach okay guys let's look at another one quickly the creative so the creative uses social media to establish and showcase their talent build credibility as an artist or as the creative and to attract opportunities for paid work right or for collaborative work so posts are centered around personal projects collaborative and paid work commission so you'll see a lot of the work that they've done for somebody else um you'll see them talk about their collaborations either with other artists or with brands right so who comes to mind guys victoria taylor taj francis yes somebody says that's me taja yes taja is a illustrator i think and an animator nick studios yes okay about not live that's who i chose as well i chose um 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 natasha from about not life she posts first of all she's amazing she's amazing and i'm bigging her up because she was one of the digital jamaica people to watch before they were famous edition okay um because i just absolutely loved her work and she's just blown up real big she gone international she's collaborating with adobe she's doing she's she's creating graphics for oprah for all sorts of celebrities it's just amazing to see her rise right and she had this she had this project where she was doing i think it's i don't remember what the name of the the, the 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 project was where i think every day she would do a sketch or um an illustration kind of thing what was it called uh she had a name for it and it was a portrait a day it was a portrait a day right and she would do this kind of these really amazing kind of collages but these were personal projects and because she were she was using these personal projects to establish herself as an artist to build her credibility to show off her skills and i think that took off that really really um took off in a wicked way her name is natasha cunningham it really took off in a wicked way and now she is a superstar and we love that for her okay all right so that's the creative and then you have the activist so this persona uses social media as a soapbox to express their thoughts and strong opinions on social issues injustices they feel strongly about the goal is to use social media as a campaign base to make noise about an issue to affect change or at the very least bring attention to an issue who comes to mind guys crystal tomlinson lisa Han mm, lisa Hanna. i don't know about that sean king sean king is a perfect non-local example yeah i don't know who stacy and chin is the example i use is dr sexy ann uh shelly ann weeks uh she uses her social media platform her thing is sexual reproduction women's rights and mainly period poverty she talks about that all the time right and she has been able to do some really amazing things around period poverty um she has had so many different seminars and webinars and she has done school tours where she has gone into the schools to talk to the students about what is period poverty um how to address it she has provided pads for hundreds of thousands of people and she has been able to get brands to come on board because this is even though it wasn't a, a necessarily a topic in jamaica she brought that topic into jamaica but on an international stage people have been talking about period poverty for a while but we weren't talking about it here and she kind of brought that into focus in the spotlight here and she also talks about some other reproductive issues she have an annual conference around pelvis Pel annual pelvic pelvis conference something that, all right yeah anyways so this is you know activist uh, i'm not so sure about lisa hannah if i would classify lisa as an activist that's it. she's a politician so you know um but i'm going to look up stacy chin and of course yeah crystal tomlinson for a while her name is shelly ann weeks dr sexy ann on instagram she was a former col columnist I think she may still be a columnist where she talked about sex and stuff like that. She has, she's an author. She's written books about period. 
She's written books about health. She's really into women's health, especially reproductive health. Okay? All right, guys. The next persona is the professional. So you have two types of professionals. So you have type A. So this is a professional who works for somebody. They, they have a nine-to-five job. They use social media for personal gain, meaning somewhere to show off their knowledge or skill, particular to family, friends, and other professionals in their field, right? So they're not an entrepreneur, but they work for an institution or they, they have a job, but they want to show off to people that, hey, I've made it, I can afford my own car, I live in my own home, and I'm knowledgeable, right? And so, but they're not really targeting, they're not necessarily looking for opportunities, they're just flexing, you know, they're flexing on the ground, right? So you have type A, then you have the type B professional who uses social media for professional gain. So whether that is to expand their professional networks or to establish their knowledge and skills to attract better opportunities for themselves, right? So you have that kind of professional, right? No, type, I wouldn't say most people because the both type A and type B are using social media intentionally. They are not casual users of social media, okay? All right, so let's look at the traits, the traits. So they demonstrate their intelligence by sharing their stance on important issues, trends, and subject matter they consider themselves expert in. Over time, they may establish a, a reputation as a thought leader in a particular industry or a critical thinker with a solid knowledge base on a wide range of topics. So who comes to mind for you? Dr. Philip Coombs, I would say Dr. Philip Coombs is, he is a professional, but I don't think it's, I don't think he would fall under this category. There's another category coming up that I think he would fall under, but not this one. Gary Buckler, Dr. Gas Buster. Is that Dr. Philip Coombs you're talking about? Lecturer Damien King. Okay. All right. So my pick was a gentleman by the name of David Palmer. David Palmer is the head of blockchain lead for Vodafone UK. He's a Jamaican, but he's a second generation Jamaican from the UK. And he, you'll find that he posts a lot of articles, a lot of industry-based articles, but he doesn't just repost them. He gives you his opinion on what this means or what this could mean or why this is good or why this isn't good, right? And in that way, he's really establishing himself corpse-centric. I have another category that corpse-centric may come up in. And in that way, he's really establishing himself as a thought leader in that space, in his industry, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's look at another one, guys. The savvy personal brand. So the savvy personal brand strategically uses social media to establish, so, so establish subject matter authority, credibility, and to grow their brand. They leverage their personality to build networks, community, and followership. They then leverage their strong social media presence to attract beneficial or paid opportunities. Randy Rowe for the professional. KD Francis. <laughs> uh, I've never really done personal branding on social media. Um, bad girl, die, die. Mm, okay. My pick for this was corp centric. That that's that's who I think the savvy personal brand represents, um, because a lot of why I think Joel is popular is because he's relatable, he's fashionable, he's very good looking. Let's let's not ignore that. He's a very good looking piece of black man, um, but he also has a personality. Um, he has a personality, and that personality, I think, is what attracts people to him, apart from the fact that he's gorgeous. The personality attracts people to him. He shares his opinion on things, and, he, and, and by accessible mean, you feel like you can talk to Joel. You feel like you can at Joel or mention Joel, and he will respond. You know, he's very accessible in that way. 
And um, no, it's not a shoot your shot or anything. John and I are friends. John and I are friends, but me, I them at work. <laughs> He's a good looking piece of man. Uh, but Joel and I are friends, um, and I'm way older than Joel. No, I don't. I don't rob cradles. Anyways, so um, so yeah, his pr is, it, th these these platforms they're knowledgeable, you know. They're very knowledgeable in their in their own field, but the, what drives their brand is more personality, and their knowledge actually comes out through their personality and how they engage. Somebody says Terry Carell, yes. Terry Carroll, Kalila Reynolds, Naomi Garrick, same Carrie and Tomlinson. They're all very knowledgeable, very sophisticated people, but it's the personality that attracts people to them. And they know that their personality is attractive, right? And so they, they, a lot of their social media, even though it's mostly education based, um, they find a way it's very, it's, they inject their socials with personality. And, and that is what really attracts people and keep people coming back to their socials. It's what makes people want to follow them because they're less stuffy, less, oh my God, I'm so great. Even though they are, they are in effect marketing themselves very hard, but it's more personality-based marketing than anything else. Um, so Joel is corp-centric on all platforms. David Palmer, I think, is only on LinkedIn as David Palmer. Um, Christopher Nunez, yes. Savvy personal brands also transcends a business. Guys, remember that we're these personas are all, as I said, intentional. They're businesses, they're brands, and they're businesses. So, yeah, these are all business brand based personas I'm talking about. Now, why I brought up this the purple cow is Christopher Nunez, yeah. Um, we can debate about personality, but he does have personality i guess um and i think his personality has attracted a lot of people to his platform um he shares a lot about his family he's very personal he's very accessible and of course he's being strategic about how he uses social media look up look 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 at how he has been talking about his child and what he has been doing introducing his child into the space and even creating a brand and then the lavender calf, right? And then using his child to promote that brand. That's extremely savvy if you ask me. That's genius. But that's just me. In any case, guys. So why I brought this up is because Andre Cooks. Guys, you can think of a lot of them. I think this is probably the most popular type that we have in Jamaica. And the reason why I brought this up is because I want you guys to tell me where do you fall? Which one of these personas do you fall in? If you fall into any, because you might fall outside of one of these personas, but which persona you fall in? You also have the thirst trappers, which I didn't put here because it's not necessarily business business, but they do attract a lot of um, opportunities to themselves. So, of course, they're going to post sexy pictures, provocative controversial kind of stuff um and then you have the social butterflies but i think the savvy personal brands can also be social butterflies because i said it's a lot of personality based you, you see them in pictures doing a lot of things with other brands you're going you're everywhere you're doing a lot of stuff aren't you but that's because they're so strategic it's all strategy as bush would say right Thirst trappers, yes, they call them thirst trapper calls because they tend to post sexy half-naked pictures of themselves um, in a more provocative kind of way. Google thirst trap, you see what I'm talking about. Anyways, guys, and even if it's not explicit, it's overtly sexual. It have, it's, there's an overtly sexual undertone um, to it. All right, guys. Um... All of us are trying to be a savvy personal brand child because they're the ones making the money. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, let's quickly, let's quickly move on. Right. So I wanted to look at the role of social media in marketing. So I'm not sure if our guest presenter is here. Let me check if, if Talika is here. What am I doing? Hold on, let me stop sharing to check if... No, she's not here just yet. Let me buzz her. All 
Oh, she is here. Hi, Telika. Telika is here. Okay, Telika, give me about 10 minutes. Let me quickly wrap up the uh, this one and then we can jump in with you okay so the role of social media in marketing so there there are several reasons why as a marketer it makes sense or as a brand or small business or any any business for that matter it makes sense for you to be on social media and for a long time we took social media as just you know like a thing that the millennials do or the gen zeros do it's, it's not serious let me let me disabuse you guys of that thought social media is big business it's a multi billion dollar business and not just for the owner of the platform but for persons who know how to use the platform properly right there's money to be made off social media if you are if you have a solid strategy that you're implementing tweaking perfecting here are just some of the things that social media can do for you it can give you visibility um does your brand exist if it's not online if it's not on social media does it really exist though um remember the very first class we talk about how consumer behavior has changed the consumer the change in consumer behavior is what is driving um a lot of this is what and is what makes social media so powerful because how do we find businesses now how do we find products how we find services online but not just website we also check socials because we want to see what the business is posting what they're talking about how they're communicating with people we want to see all of that because that's a part of how we make decisions now because we're spoiled for choice so because we're spoiled for choice we want to we want more than just yeah you have the product and service and the product look good and it, it probably even work that's not necessarily all it takes in terms of decision making for us oh guys i'm not sharing oh lord i'm not sharing my screen sorry um let me share about my screen i'm not sharing guys all right so that's not all it takes um anymore people want more people want to know that you and them are on the same page that you your brand represent the same thing they represent um that you are relatable that they like you they want to like you before they buy from you but before any of that can happen you have to be visible to your audience so social media can give you a lot of visibility social media can make you relevant to your audience as well because then how do i know so for instance you have four companies offering skincare products right how do i know which one to buy honestly it's based on how i feel and let's not pretend that people aren't people and we're highly emotional and most of our market our or purchasing choices are based on emotions how we feel about a brand or what we think about our brand or perception about a brand so it could be as simple as I prefer how this brand market their product them picture look better them video look better they, they tend to be more responsive so i'm just gonna go over here thank you so if, if you can create content you can develop a profile that would be relatable to your audience or that would be not relatable sorry relevant to your audience right you can build relationships with your audience so uh if you look at this graph over here it says and this is a survey that was done of course this is not a local survey but it's a survey that was done and 66.7 percent of the respondents say that social media um is used for better communication with customers of course they were talking to marketers for better communication with customers and you'll find that even with established brands even with government agencies if i can't get you when i message you on social media what you doing why why are you even here if you're not gonna respond to messages why are you even here why are you on social media that's annoying right because people now have expectations and that's a part of relationship building and this is how you can get an edge up on established businesses and a competition by having building good relationships good customer service based relationships building communities right because from your communities you can find your customers and your customers are also a part of your community so you're nurturing your customers you're retargeting people you're attracting more people to um to you on social media and your community 
through community marketing can expand your reach exponentially um enhance service right and so um this is a part of customer service as well you can enhance your customer service through your social media so if you know say use one of them businesses that when people call you them can't get it on your phone just make sure someone they message you on social media on answer in a reasonable amount of time and in this way only can minimize the foolishness of people not answering the phone um and gain some points by being responsive on social media yeah of course for most people it's about generating leads and sales because we are not going on social media for play we're going on social media as a part of our business marketing sales apparatus right because social media as i said is a lot more complex than we give it credit for one and two it is not easy to do any of these things on social media because at the heart of this is your content right and so because it's so difficult and because it takes a lot of effort and planning and strategy we'll have to be intentional about how we use it and of course we're looking to um for more sales right which means that we have to generate more leads so that's pr the primary intention for a lot of people and of course it's about customer retention um if i like i follow self-care tiffany's i purchase her products i think her products are great and i follow her she's very good at following up hey you know you purchased this how was it did you like it what didn't you like what do you think we could improve how did he... so she asks questions like that and as a customer i think that is great because i feel like i'm being heard i feel like i have an input i feel like what i say is a part of her consideration as to how she develop her products and her brand and so that can be very effective for relationship building community building to enhance the service and for customer retention of course i'm telling you all about it so that's me generating leads for her so this is a part of community marketing isn't it so this is just some of the ways social media can help you grow expand your business etc 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 now guys i wanted to start social media marketing but i don't think i'm going to be able to do that today let me let me just quickly go through two things two things first one is what is social media marketing tell you i'm not sure if you're back if you're back give me a few please social media marketing yep i'm here whenever you're ready okay awesome she's here guys yay okay <laughs> So social media marketing is a process of creating content for social media platforms. And there's a reason why you're creating content for social media platforms. As I said, you're using these platforms intentionally with some kind of intention. And of course, probably one of the main intention is to promote your products or services, build your community with your target audience and drive traffic to your business. You want more eyes on your business, but not only do you want more eyes, what happens when the eyes come to your business? You want to be relevant to them. Um, you want to be relatable. Um, and you want them to, you want to be a consideration when they're making a decision as to who they're going to um, patronize, right? And that's what social media, oh, that's what social media marketing helps you to do. Now, this graphic here is from the audience in terms of audience um, insights. And it's talking about, um, kind of kind of ranking uh how social media marketing can really help you build your business so it's it's, it's a lot of exposure generating traffic to your website building loyal fans through your community of course giving you insights on your audience leads seo yes seo is a thing on social media sometimes when you are looking for things and a linkedin profile pop up what you think that is uh partnerships opportunities for collaboration of course reduce your marketing expenses because traditional marketing is not cheap -o. okay all right and let's look at some of the pillars of social media marketing content can you have social media marketing without content i think not your audiences your audience definitely knowing and understanding your audience is key developing a community engagement if content is king 
on social media, engagement is queen. Because just posting content and having content, just sitting on your profile does absolutely nothing for you. But if you can generate engagement around that content, right? Uh, engagement, promotions, promoting your products and service, promoting yourself, promoting your brand or your business. Uh, and of course, developing, you have to have a funnel, guys. You have to know what is the process you want to take your buyer through or your potential buyer through. What are you trying to get them to do? And that's what we mean by funnel. How are you going to move them from one place to another place to another place to ultimately where you can convert that into sales, right? And here's another, this, this, here's another five core pillars of social media market, marketing. Strategy. After our strategy, guys, it can't be random willy-nilly. That does not work. Even the most random-looking business profile you can find on social media. And by random, I mean it looks like there's no strategy. It looks like they're just posting things. There's a strategy behind it. Social listening is important, and social media can you can use social media. And by social listening is you are really looking out for what are people saying about you, about your brand, about your product or service, about the industry you're in, about the niche you're in or the market you're in. What are people saying about that? And you're going to then take that information and put it back into your strategy. So again, you can become more visible to the right people and more relevant to the right people or fix things that are wrong with your business or brand. Okay? Advertising, planning, analytics, and reporting are some of the other core pillars uh, organic growth is possible on social media less possible than it was before but supplementing that organic growth with advertising is always a good idea and of course you have to plan and your analytics and reporting is also very important so yes now we are going to go to our guest presenter and today we have the beautiful Miss Talika McDonald, she's a founder of Women's Marketing Code. Uh, Talika is a marketing coach who teaches women CEOs, whether a startup or persons earning under five figures, how to use Instagram to build a powerful marketing strategy. Um, even if you have no prior experience in marketing, and even if you don't like sales. Telika goes, this over that. Even if you don't <laughs> like sales, you hate sales like me. Uh -huh. She shows you how to use Instagram, how to market yourself on Instagram, how to generate leads on Instagram, and how to sell on Instagram without being annoying or disruptive um, while doing that. So, guys, without further ado, let's get into it with Miss Telika. Hi. Yay. Uh, hi Katie. thank you so much for the introduction i absolutely love it as always i was listening in and i almost forgot i was supposed to present because i was so into your pre um, presentation <laughs> it was really really good like i awesome. literally sat down and i was like mm -hmm, that is true that's fact <laughs> and i just sat down i was just taking in the presentation until you were like Oh, guys, actually, and I'm like, all right, I'm here to present. It's actually pretty funny. But um, let me hop on camera on screen really quick. And also let me start screen sharing with you guys so you guys can see. Um, Sandra says, I look like 18 or 21. Sandra, I know you land, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you, girl. <laughs> Can you yeah, share? Actively looking at the at the chat and stuff. How are we? So, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me see. So you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Okay, so Katie, can you? I don't I know what you want to do. Do you I want did, to I screen did, share? Or did, what do you want to do? I didn't stop anything. I'm not sure. I tried to turn on my camera and it says you cannot. Your, cam your, your camera is not on. Yeah, it says you cannot start your video because the host. Oh, has oh, stopped sorry, you. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Stop. I've, made you, I've made you a co-host. You can go now. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Okay, okay. Great, 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 great. So let me know if... Let me try that again. Um, can you see me? There she is. Okay, amazing. Fantastic. 
All right, so once again, hey everyone, uh, let me know if you can see my screen really quick. I'm gonna start screen sharing. This is a really quick presentation deck with you guys and we're gonna go into everything else. Uh, so let's see. All right, so can everyone see my screen? Kitty, can you see my screen? Like what's, what's going on there? Are we all good? It's loading. Okay, it says okay. you have started screen share. Ah, yes, here it is. It's up. Yay, amazing. All right, so once again, hey everyone. My name is Talika McDonald, AKA T. That's what literally everybody on Instagram, anybody who follows me, that's what they know me for. I know me by. Um, if you actually already follow me on Instagram, you're probably hearing my first name for the first time and it's really funny. Um, but let's jump right in, all right? So what I'm gonna be talking about with you guys today is pretty much piggybacking off of what Katie Ann started talking about, which is social media marketing. Now, when it comes down to social media marketing, it's something that I've been doing for years, teaching my clients how to do, doing for myself, teaching my students how to do. There's a whole breakdown and a whole framework that I developed that kind of just puts everything into a motion for you, clarify what you should be doing and what you should not be doing. Because as you know, there is a lot of, what I like to call noise on social media. I feel like everybody's telling you what to do and pulling you in all sorts of different direction, but nobody is really getting to the actionable steps and the mindset that you need to be in to actually take action in your business, right? So let's jump right into it. So let's get to know each other for a little bit. Let's get to know each other, right? So who am I? Just really quick introduction. Once again, my name is Talika McDonald, aka T, and I'm a personal, well, I'm your marketing coach and personal development enthusiast who's here to teach you how to level up your marketing game. Now, what do I do? Really simple, really quick, like what Katie Ann said. I teach new women CEOs in startup who are earning under five figures how to build a powerful Instagram marketing strategy even if they have no prior experience in marketing. No, the WMC Impact. This is a brand and something that I've been doing for many years. So I've been coaching women CEOs for the past four years, helping them drive sales in their business, revamping their social media profiles to attract paying customers, not just followers, but actual customers, and building their impactful brands. Over 500 students have enrolled in WMC courses. Many students have moved on to major business accomplishments from earning their first sale, which might not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal for a lot of people, to even some earning six figures in their business, even though the goal is to really get them to four or five figures, right? And then between coaching and courses, I've worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs, but also manage a raving community of over 10K entrepreneurs who learn and benefit from WMC every single day. So it's a huge impact and something that I hope to continue growing um, and serving you all, of course, as time goes by. So things that we're going to talk about really quick today is the framework, so I'm going to share with you the framework that I teach to my students that I personally do um, and that I also teach or design for my clients as well. Then we're going to go into content strategy and then I'm just going to share really quick just some pro tips for beginners, just some things that are right across the board for every single person, every single industry. And these things will kind of help you stay focused, motivated, and disciplined when it comes on to your social media or particularly your Instagram marketing strategy. No, the framework that I teach is called VELS. So VELS is a, it's an acronym and it's a breakdown. So we talk about visibility, engagement, lead generation, and sales. So like I was saying before, kind of piggybacking off of what Kenyan said earlier, um, visibility is one of the main things that you want to look at in your business. I find that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with visibility just simply because you'll be posting content or you have a beautiful website or you're doing everything. You have the foundation down pat. But when it comes down to driving traffic to your 
business or getting new eyeballs on your business to get people to actually stop scrolling or to pay attention to your ad or anything of the sort, we struggle with that. So what I find is that most entrepreneurs kind of skip all of this and get to here and get to sales, but really and truly it's the opposite. Sales is the very last result you're gonna get in your business after you've implemented your marketing strategy. It's a whole journey and it's something that I teach and, and break down even further. So for um, visibility, it focuses on strategies to attract new customers every single month. Very important because like I said before, no new eyeballs means that you're gonna be stuck. Another thing too that I find is entrepreneurs will be like, you know, I'm not getting any sales. And then my immediate question after that is, well, when was the last time did you get new people to look at your business? And it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> it's been a while. I haven't done that. I'm not really sure, you know. And then that's why you're stuck, right? Because you're not really, you're not building the pipeline or you're not getting more people to be interested in what you sell. Um, engagement. Now, a lot of people on Instagram will say that engagement doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you're a business and you're here to sell. But like what Kadian was saying earlier, you're ultimately building relationships with people. So if you're not engaging with your audience, if your audience don't feel like they can like you or they can trust you, you're definitely going to have a problem with the rest of the funnel or with the rest of the process because nobody will want to opt into what you're selling. And of course, nobody will want to buy what you're selling just from this, this little point, this section right here. Now, for lead generation, it focuses on identifying your VIPs. Now, not every single person who follows you on Instagram will actually buy from you. It's very important to know that. And over time, you will kind of learn as your business grows and as you're hopefully paying attention to your insights and you're strategic in your marketing, you'll be able to learn how many of your new followers on Instagram will actually convert if you're paying attention to your insights. So for example, um, when I was in the phase of aggressively growing my business, I would know that 300 to 500 followers to the month would equate to roughly about 200 or something along those lines, um, new customers for that month. So it's very important that you're able to say, okay, out of X amount of new followers that I'm having or I'm getting, my goal is to get X amount of new people out of that. And I call those people your VIPs. These are the people who will, some of them will comment, some of them won't, but ideally these are the people that's gonna reach out to you. They're gonna be looking at your website. They're gonna take it one step further other than just engaging with your, um, with your content or liking your posts. And then of course your job as an entrepreneur is to nudge them into your sales funnel every single month. So like Kadian was saying earlier, you have to have a sales funnel in your business. And really, I know when people hear sales funnels, they kind of get a little bit intimidating because it's like, eh, I don't really know what all that is. That sounds like just another fancy marketing term. But really it's just you being able to say, okay, when someone sees my page for the first time, this is what they're gonna see, which is your content. They're gonna click my link in bio. My link in bio is set up like this specifically to take them through to, to this website or to sign up for my email list. When they get to my website, this is what's happening. This is what they're gonna see. And that's what's gonna convert them. Or when they sign up for my email list, they're gonna get X amount of emails and those emails is what's gonna convert them. So it's literally just being able to tell me or yourself really <laughs> what, um, what are the different steps people are gonna take from hearing about you for the first time to finally deciding um, to buy from you. Now, the final part is focusing on, which is your sales. Notice how many steps. Now, I always like to point this out. Do you notice how many steps you had to go through before we got to the sales part? We went through quite a few steps, right? So a lot of entrepreneurs like to kind of jump to this part. You post one piece of content and then it's like, oh, you know, I didn't get any sales or you've been posting like literally for two weeks and then now you're frustrated because you, you haven't been getting any sales. But the truth is you haven't done enough groundwork 
in the previous parts of the framework to say you're going to convert somebody to become a customer, which is why I developed this framework to kind of show you the map. So it connects with your sales funnel, with your content strategy, with your customer journey, it takes everything into consideration, right? So for sales, what we're ideally doing is we're focusing on getting new sales, right? Everybody wants to get new sales, but What's going to help you build out your business the most is your recurring sales. So it's not just getting new sales. To be honest, getting new sales is the fairly easier part of your sales process. As Kadian was saying earlier, your customer retention or what I like to call post-purchase marketing. So marketing that happens after they bought from you is also extremely important because guess what? And I find this happening to a lot of entrepreneurs. You got the sale. Great. Congratulations. Love that for you, bestie. But this person disappears. You have no social proof. You have no testimonial. And then you find that every single month you're scrambling for sales. You're frustrated because it's like, oh, I didn't get any new sales this much. And because of that, my business is tanking. When it really shouldn't be like that, new sales should really just be adding to the revenue that you get outside of what you're already getting on a recurring basis. No, that was kind of a lot. Um, how I like to do my presentations is like, I like to pause just for a little bit to answer any questions. Cause I just personally find that um, if you just keep going, sometimes you lose people because they get hung up on their questions and don't really focus on anything else that you're saying. So I'm gonna check the chat or just a Q and A to see if anybody have any questions. Katie, you can also let me know um, if you saw anything as well, if you see any questions coming up. Sandra says, yes, indeed. And then Kimberly says, best framework. <laughs> Thank you. Kenya, do you see anyone in the, do you see any questions or anything? I'm not sure if I'm looking at every single possible point where people might be communicating. Has there been any questions thus far? Let's see, Q and A. How do you plan a ad budget? All right, so I'm going to get on the next slide. I'm going to get into ads for a little bit and I'm gonna answer that question through there. But that's a really good question. Um, actually, yeah, let me just get into the presentation, the rest of the presentation, and then we're gonna get into that for a little bit. So, no. We spoke about the different phases and what they're supposed to be doing and what's the goal of each phase. But now I'm going to show you or talk about the different strategies that will help you to accomplish the goals of each phase. Now, for visibility, we just said just now that the goal is getting new eyeballs, getting new people to look at our business, right? Ways how you can do this is through ads content strategy, collaboration, or influencer or affiliate marketing. Now for ads, the general rule of thumb that I recommend is ads, or what I always say is ads are vehicles, right? So vehicles, as we know, are meant to take people from one place to another. That's also the same goal for any ad that you do. That being said, when you run an Instagram ad, for example, and people click on it, it's going to likely take them to either your website or your profile. If <laughs> the foundation that you have, so your profile or the website or the destination that you're taking people to is not optimized to convert. So for example, you have poor content on your page or you literally only have like two posts on your page and like nothing's going on over there or your website is really hard to navigate. There's no buttons on your website to actually convert people or, or you know, give more information for the sale. You're going to find that your ads don't work. And so I find that when a lot of people um, reach out to me or when I'm working, working with my clients, they'll tell me, oh, you know, I ran ads and I've been running ads, but it didn't work out. My ads don't work or something along those lines. But when you check it out, it's not working because A, the ad itself was just not um, 
it's just not as attention grabby or it's just not something that's going to let people stop scrolling or the destination. So your profile, your website, those different places where you're sending people to is not optimized to convert. Now, with that being said, I personally don't recommend ads until you have those things or have your destination where you're taking people to optimized because it's just not going to work. You're going to find that you're wasting money. And as a small business, we don't really we don't really have the time or the capital or anything for all that. Right. That being said, once you've identified or once you've gotten to that point where you're like, OK, I have enough information here, you know, it converts. I've done some testing. You know, this works. No, you can start using ads. And then the budget I would recommend for that. No, it really dep depends on how aggressive you want to be. So for example, when I was just starting out in my business, my ads budget would be like about $50, right? But now that my business has grown and it's it's a little bit, when it comes down to my personal growth strategy, it's a little bit more on the aggressive side. So my ads will look like anywhere between 200 to now recently $300 um, per month. But I've for me, from my business, my business is at the point where it converts. So that for me would give me high conversions, new customers and all of that. So for your ad budget, especially if you're new to the process, you want to test things out. Any $50 should be like your cap, right? And then you test out the ad. So I always say run the ad for a week or two. See how it's performing. If it's performing well and doing what it's supposed to do, amazing, great, fantastic. Throw some more money on it. Um, but if it's not, just cancel it. Don't even let it finish running for the rest of the duration. Cancel the ad because it's not converting. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. And even if you allow it to finish, it's just going to end up being a big waste of your money. So that's what I always recommend for ads. I always say, if something is working in your marketing, why would you want to put a cap on that? So test out your ads first. Once it's performing, great. You know, depending on your budget and your marketing funds allocation, you can decide to increase it or you can decide to, you know, completely get rid of the ad and scratch that ad and do something else. Um, something I would also say when it comes down to ads is, just don't, just don't let it be a case where you expect every single ad to work. That's not necessarily going to happen, even for experts, because marketing in and of itself is a very repetitive process of testing things and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't work. So if you run an ad and it wasn't as fruitful, it's not the end of the world, doesn't mean that you shouldn't be using ads, doesn't mean that ads don't work for you, it just means that we need to tweak something. And that's usually where I step in to either look at the ad and say, eh, we could have done this differently or, oh, you're not in the place to start running ads yet. And so we need to fix these things before you get back to running ads, right? So that is the main thing that I, um, that I recommend. No, um, another thing I'm going to get into really quick, just so we're not confused, is that your ads are supposed to do different things. So another mistake that I see entrepreneurs making is that they'll create an ad and that one ad is supposed to be doing six million things. You're selling, you're trying to get people to look at your page, you're trying to do all of these different things. I strongly recommend putting your ads into categories. So this one ad, the job is to get people to my profile and to convert to new followers. We call that brand awareness. Maybe the next ad or another ad can be for lead generation. So getting people to sign up for your website, to fill up for a form, um, to fill out a form or anything on, along those lines. And then your sales ads are a little bit more complicated, to be honest, because you can run an ad that just targets new people, but then Facebook allows you to get into retargeting and it's a it's a whole new thing, but overall, I recommend having different categories for your ads. Now, for engagement, so we're moving down the framework. For engagement, what we want to do in this phase is we want to engage with the people we just attracted in visibility. So, all right, great, amazing. You just got all of these new followers, but how are you engaging with them? So I always say to have engagement campaigns. Engagement campaigns can look like anything, any 
idea or strategy or plan that you have that its sole purpose is to get people to be commenting, to get people to reach out to you, get people to, you know, talk to you, just overall engage with your business. Also, a lot of people expect followers or expect people to just start engaging with them off the bat. Not how social media works. I always say a great engagement strategy to have is to actually go out, go and tap the followers tab of your profile and engage with your followers. Because guess what? At the end of the day, Instagram is an algorithm. And how it works is the more people engage with your stuff, the algorithm goes, okay, amazing. You guys are besties. Okay, let me show your content to this person more often. But guess what? If there is no engagement between you guys, the algorithm is going to go, oh, maybe you guys just like aren't that cool with each other. So I'm not going to share your content to this person as often. So engagement is very, very important, especially on social media. Outside of all of the factors we discussed before about building relationships and stuff like that, it's also important to help the algorithm help you boost your business and get more people to look at your business on a consistent basis, right? Content strategy helps with this a lot as well. It's going to be the primary part of this, um, this phase, just simply because your engagement strategy can look for your, your engagement strategy or your content strategy for this phase can look like, depending on your brand, it can look like memes, it can look like Q&As, it can look like going lives. Everybody hate going live, but I strongly recommend it for engagement and different things like that, right? And then, so we're continue, continuing to move down the framework. Whoops, sorry guys, let me go back a little bit. Continuing to move down the framework, we're now going to go into lead generation. So once again, in the last slide, we said that lead generation, we're getting people to let us know that they're interested in what we're selling. Now, let's look at it this way. We just got these new people, we just engage with them a little bit, and then now we're actively trying to pick out or identify those VIPs. So in the new group of people that we got, we're trying to identify whether or not they will actually buy from us. So we put these different things or we use these different strategies to get people to indicate that they're interested in working with us so or buying from us. So this looks like you know, getting people to send you a DM, getting people to look at your website, sign up for your email list, fill out a form, essentially take the next step outside of just following you on Instagram. So the different strategies you can use to do this is, of course, your sales funnels, your websites, your email marketing, your ads, and your content strategy. So I'm going to point out something at the end of this framework. I want to see if you guys have been noticing or paying attention, right? So that's essentially the whole process of lead generation, which in and of itself can be pretty extensive. But I just want you guys to understand that this is where we're now getting those followers, those new people to tell us and, and let us know that they're ready to move on to the next step. It's important to note that not every single person is going to reach out to you or send you a DM. Also, not every single person is going to comment, but you just have those type of bios where they see your content, they're, they don't even like your content, they follow you, they're just going to go straight to the website and opt in or buy from you. So that's also something important to note. Now, the final step is sales. So now we're looking at promotions, post-purchase marketing, and once again, your content strategy. So promotions, we're talking about, you know, just the different ways that you talk about your products or your services, um, sales that you might have, things like that. I always personally say that your business shouldn't rely on a flash sale or those type of sales to be generating revenue. But to be honest, just looking and other business models and just depending on how you want to run your business as an entrepreneur it really just depends on what you want to do because she in fashion over all here doing what they need to do fashion over is going to text you every single day with a new sale all right and they're one of the biggest um um you know fashion or clothing line brands that we have out there right now so it really just depends on your business or what you want to do 
post-purchase marketing, we're talking about follow-ups. So in the beginning, Katie was talking about um, someone who was excellent with their follow-up. That's ideally, or that's essentially post-purchase marketing. So those are the different ways, how you follow up with your customers, um, the emails that you send out, and overall different um, structures that you have in place to facilitate a second, third, fourth, fifth sale. That's your post-purchase marketing. And then finally, once again, we have your content strategy. So the type of content that you post will really determine how well you can evoke emotions in your customers to get them to buy from you. Now we're just gonna move right along. So <laughs> notice the common denominator in each of the different phases of Vels is content strategy. Content is king and it's going to be a very big part of how you show up on social media and how you navigate the world of social media marketing. So though your overall social me media marketing strategy can include the other things I mentioned, the main game on social media is content. Now we're gonna look, we're gonna talk about content strategy for a little bit. I'm gonna share some tips and some pointers with you that I always share with my students and clients to kind of get you guys, get your ideas flowing on what ideally content strategy can look like. So the real deal behind creating profitable content. Amazing content literally encompasses two, just two things, guys. Oh my God, I know you're seeing so many. So much more information on Instagram, but really it just boils down to two things. I personally am somebody that just like getting to the point. So I, you're going to find that the way that I teach or how I talk about things is to get to the point. And I've narrowed down amazing content to be two things, value and intention. That's it. That's it, guys. Value and intention. It will also require a lot of testing and execution to get to the point where you know exactly the type of content you need to create that will get people paying attention to your business. So I always say I can give you the ideas, I can give you the framework, I can give you all of that, but you have to go in and test these things for yourself and make it your own, tweak it, pay attention to your insights and all of that to really optimize these things or these ideas for your business. No, this is where most entrepreneurs get stuck. So once again, I can give you the ideas for profitable content, but you will still need to actually create the content and then check your insights and see if it's working. No, let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about really quick, value and intention, like what that is. Because people will tell you, oh, you need to be creating valuable content, but nobody really tells you what value looks like, right? And that is something, it's a personal pet peeve of mine, so we're going to go into it today. So value. The questions you want to ask yourself is, what's the value you're providing in this post? Why should people stop scrolling? Remember that Social media right now has grown to, there's content all over the place. I'm pretty sure there's trillions of content out there. Why is it that people should stop to pay attention to your piece of content? Like what's going to be the big thing that lets people stop and pay attention to that? Now, the next thing that we want to look at is what type of emotions are you trying to evoke in your audience? A lot of us create content and never really know what type of emotions we're trying to evoke. We don't really know if we're trying to have our customers feel happy, excited, if we're evoking that fear of missing out, which by the way, is a very big emotion that drives sales. We don't, we don't know how we want our audience to feel. We just get up every day and it's just vibes. <laughs> we just get up every day and we're just creating content, but we have we, there's, there's nothing behind that. And we want to really avoid that type of mistake. No, the last thing is what type of value does it provide? No. When we're on social media, people will say value is either educational or inspirational. And that is, that is just so not true. Value for your content or for your brand or for your audience can literally be in, inspirational. It can be comedic. It can be motivational. Yes, it, of course, can be educational. But if 
your brand is just about making people happy and, and making people laugh along with selling what you sell, that's valuable. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be just educational or inspirational. I find that a lot of entrepreneurs were posting motivational quotes and inspirational quotes on Instagram, and that's great. But also, it's not a part of your brand and it's not the type of value that you want to provide. But this is what you do because this is what everybody says that you should be doing. So I always say, start with yourself. What type of value are you trying to provide for your audience? And then your goal as a business owner and also marketer of your business is to find people who are attracted to that type of thing. The next thing is intention. So who in your target audience or niche is this piece of content intended for? Who are we creating this piece of content for? So let's say, for example, you sell skincare and you have multiple products in your business, each aim to do different things. When you create this specific piece of content, are we trying to talk to people who have hyperpigmentation? Are we trying to talk to people who struggle with hyperpigmentation for like, you know, years? Are we trying to talk to people who struggle with acne? Who, who, are we, who are we trying to talk to in this post? Because if you don't know who you're trying to talk to, then you're going to ultimately wind up talking to no one except a wall or just talk to a group of people who can kind of resonate with what you're saying, but not really. So you want to really be able to sit down and identify who your pieces of content is for. Now, the next thing is, what is this post supposed to do? What is it supposed to do? When we post this post, when we make this post, are we trying to get people to look at our LinkedIn bio? Are we trying to get people to DM us? Are we trying to get people to comment? Are we trying to get people to share this? What are we trying to do when we make this post or when we're creating this post? And then finally, because you know what the post is supposed to do, you also know what type of metrics you should be looking out for. Now, guys, this is super important because I will have my students or clients come to me and they're like, T, this post, it was supposed to do this and it's not doing this or it's only got this and it, it's a whole thing. And then when I look at it, I can tell that, yeah, this was their goal, but they're looking at the wrong metrics. So therefore, it did what it was supposed to do, but because you're looking at the wrong metrics, you think that it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So for example, you make a post that the goal is to get people to look at your website um, and to ultimately sell. So whether that they're going to DM you or buy on the website. It did that. You got, when you check your insights, your website views went up, you know, one and two people damned you, all of that. But because it didn't get, because it only got like five likes and one save, you feel like it didn't perform. You guys see what I'm saying with that? You gotta be careful with how you're looking at your post. You have to be able to tell or know what your post is supposed to do. So then you can decide the next steps you're gonna take in your business. All right. Now, once you've identified the value and intention you're providing in the post, just post it. Just post it. <laughs> That's it. It's that simple. Don't get hung up on other elements like when to post, whether or not it got a lot of likes or views, etc. Like all of those things are just sprinkles on the cake. We got to move on. Just post it and go. I find that a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck with posting content because they overthink everything else just identify the value and the intention of your post and keep it pushing. That's it. No content ideas, really, really quick. I'm gonna share with you guys that so you might wanna write this down somewhere, is customer reviews, befores and afters, random DMs from your customers praising your product or service, website reviews, testimonials, etc. Customer reviews, sell, right? Educational content. So once again, you're the experts in your business. Educate your audience on your products or services, why they should buy them, who they are for and not for. That's also equally important. You have to be able to tell people that this is not for you or this is for you. Um, use cases for what you sell, etc. Now, customer stories is something that people sleep on. 
Now, if you're already running a business or you know you're in the startup phase, you're gonna find customers who give you the full breakdown of your product or service. They're gonna tell you how they've been struggling with this for years and then try everything and then buy this brand and then buy that brand and it never worked and then use it for two. They're gonna give you the full story. These are called customer stories and these are some of the most impactful, some of the most brilliant pieces of content that will get people, that will move people to buy from you. Is in those stories, there is likely somebody else in your audience who will see that stuff is going to be the thing that makes them decide that they're going to buy from you. So when you get these stories, please don't just reply to them and engage with your, um, engage with your customer and it ends there. Make a note of it. Start collecting these things. Like I literally have a drive or a bank full of customer stories that I've gotten from people that I leverage and use from time to time. Now, pro tips for beginners. Know that content creation and overall social media marketing is a skill that has a learning curve. Don't expect to get it right all at once. It's, it's not going to happen, guys. Like it's the very first piece of advice I'm gonna share with you. Prioritize habits over results. Habits will help you build the skill faster and get out of your comfort zone. And that's where the results will happen. So don't be like, oh, I need to post three times per day. Da, 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 da. No, no, no. Let's just focus on the posting part. Let's focus on being consistent with this. And then we can start looking at the results after that. Because that's how you get hung up, right? You start paying attention to the results and you get discouraged instead of, and then the habit stops when it should be the other way around. You should be consistently building the habit no matter what. And then you can start looking at results and change or tweak the habit over time. Get in the mind frame of testing so you will not figure out everything in your marketing, nor will you be able to find what's working and what's not working without testing. Me, me love test everything, yep. <laughs> You're going to get this new content. You're going to get this, this new offer. You're going to get these different things. You're going to get this beta pro program. You're going to get all of the different testing or all the different ways that I test stuff. Because guess what? When I test or when you test, you get data. And when you have data, you know what works, what doesn't work, what you should be doing, all of that. A lot of entrepreneurs sit down on the idea, never test it, and then now all of a sudden you're in decision paralysis. You don't know what to do next, and you don't you, you, you wind up not doing anything because you're so afraid of testing. There's been many times in my business where I test out a new framework, a new strategy, I test something out, and it just never worked. And guess what? It was just like, all right, Salika, this didn't really work. <laughs> and we got to ditch this and throw this out, or... We have to tweak this, we have to optimize this, we have to, we have to fix this and then try again, right? So get in the mind frame of testing, stop trying to have everything just work out perfectly for you in one go or in even a few goals. Now, the fourth thing is batching content will give you back time in your business, but you don't have to batch content for an entire month ahead to have batched successfully. This is a big piece of advice because the advice you get floating around on social media is, oh, you need to be posting or batching content for 30 days um, ahead of time. Did it? Not a thing. You're a business owner. You're likely a solopreneur for a while. You don't have the time to be sitting down and trying to batch 30 pieces of content. But also, it's hard. It's a skill. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. It's a skill. Me personally, I can batch content for 30 days, but I don't like doing it. I don't recommend it. And I even find that sometimes when I do that, the quality of the content, is ju it just doesn't feel as creative anymore because it kind of just became robotic and started following guidelines versus following my own emotions and intuition as I'm a business owner. Also, it just puts you, it puts a lot of pressure on you and puts you in a box. So I say batch your content one week at a time, keep going um, that way. And as you develop the skill, as it gets 
as you get better at it, you can play around with batching content for 30 days. And if that's what you want to do, if that's how you want to run it, great. If not, that's fine too, right? Um, social media marketing is a long game. So if people don't feel like your brand resonates with them emotionally, you will have a harder time selling. So a lot of people just want to create the, the Instagram profile and start posting and getting sales. And that's literally not how it works. As we, as we would have seen from the framework, it will take time. Also, it depends on how aggressive your efforts were. I was talking about this with a client yesterday. If you're only posting like once a day and all of that, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but the amount of efforts that you should expect out of that should be minimal as, or results rather that you should expect out of that should be minimal, especially if you're not doing anything else. People who post once a day or I always say posting once a day and all of that is fine, but if you don't have anything else going on, you're not running ads, there's no email marketing or anything you rely on content to get new customers, you have to up the game when it comes on to posting. You just have to. Like the, the, the conversation ends, you have to just figure it out because if content is the only way you're getting new customers, then you need to be in front of people all the time and posting more is going to fix that. Now on the flip side, if you're running your ads, you have email marketing, you have a Facebook group, you have all of these different channels or strategies happening in the background, then you can get away with posting less or posting once a day and things like that, right? So that's our rule of thumb. Um, social media platforms and algorithms are meant to change. Okay, let me say that again. Social media platforms and algorithms are meant to change. So don't get hung up on every update. I know Instagram is frustrating. Everybody, everybody wants to tear out their head, but the truth is Instagram is a business. And just like how you have things in your business or moving parts in your business that's not ideal for every single customer, it's the same for social media platforms. My, I always say if the update is for you, great. You know, you can test it out layer it on top of your strategy if it doesn't align with you and what you want to do you can literally ignore it and move on like not every single update you need to sit down and internalize finally do not get hung up over results some posts will do exceptionally well and others will just absolutely flop doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong sometimes it just be like that <laughs> Sometimes the algorithm, the time, what's happening in the real world right now, all of that, all of those different things can contribute to whether or not your content performed well. Don't get hung up on those things. Just keep posting and keep doing your thing, right? And um, how often you should post depends on your business goals and your capacity. So like I literally was saying just now, if there's other strategies in place, you can post less. If not, you definitely should be posting more. Now let's go into a little Q and A. That was a lot of information. Thank you so much for sticking with me, guys. What kind of questions do you have for me? What are what are some of the questions that popped up into your head when um, going through this presentation day? So let's see. Let me just check. All right, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, guys, we are going to stick to our protocol and we are going to put our questions in the Q&A because ain't nobody got time to be scrolling up in these chats. <laughs> that's, not, that's funny. Please that put funny. your questions for Talika in the Q&A. I see four questions there already. Okay, the somebody say, how do you plan an ad budget? So for that, what was the... Okay, so I answered that one before in the presentation. So the new okay, one you did. Okay. Is, for the, the fifty dollar ad is, budget, was the fifty dollars spent on each campaign category, or did you spend it over the several ad category for the month? So for the fifty, it really depends on what my goals were for that month. So ideally, I just focus on one campaign category at a time, but you you can mix it. Um, once again, it really depends on what your marketing allocation, um, your marketing funds allocation is. But for me, when it, especially when it comes down to ads, 
I would, that $50 would be for one campaign. So let's say my goal for that month is to attract 300 new followers. I'm going to run the ad for that. And I'm going to specifically only focus on brand awareness because that's the type of ad that would get me um, those 300 followers, right? Now, let's say, for example, for that month, um, you know, I, I still want to stay on target for my growth um, plan or growth projection, which is, let's say, the 300. But guess what? I also have something launching out that month. Then I would likely spend another 50 at that point in time for a different type of ad, for example, lead generation or anything along the, those lines. So like I was saying, guys, it really depends on your marketing funds and all that. For me, I'm the type of marketer, marketer where I like to slap money on it and let it do its thing. And then I go to something else. <laughs> That's me personally. But um, for everybody else, especially if you're on a tight budget, I definitely say focus on one business goal, one campaign at a time. And then, um, you know, you can tweak it, change it pivot as we go along the next thing to note too is the reason why i said 50 is it's ads the more you spend is the more eyeballs and the more the higher chances you have of your ads doing exceptionally well i know a lot of people use way less and it's possible to use way less especially if you're looking at an ad spend per day perspective but at the end of the day it's an investment in your business which is why i i always say don't start running ads until the destination is optimized because outside of that, you're going to find that you're wasting money and you're also going to start penny, penny pinching or counting every single penny that goes into the ad. And that's not necessarily the best mindset to be in when you're running ads. Um, how can I become an affiliate? What are the, what is the process? So this isn't in my wheelhouse of like experience or conversation. I primarily help you guys with Instagram marketing strategy and getting people to look at your business. Um, affiliate marketing or becoming an affiliate marketer is a whole new world. And I personally don't like, um, and I know a little about it, but I personally don't like talking about things that I don't have full experience in. And by full experience, I mean doing it myself and being able to get results for other people to do it. So I'm right. sorry. And <laughs> I affiliate, can't and, and affiliate, affiliate marketing programs differ based on the, the, the brands offering these pro um, programs. So you'll just have to do some research based on which brand you're working with, if they have an affiliate program, how you get in on a program and stuff. So there's no one size fits all when it comes to that either. And to be honest, does it really work for us as Jamaicans? I'm not so sure. Yeah, like it's, it's you as a Jamaican, you're better off using an affiliate marketer to get international crowd looking at your business versus the flip right? It, it really depends. So um, Lady T does posting content from other sources. Is it recommended to build content? Um, <laughs> it really depends on your business, um, your business model and what you're selling. But I always say people follow you to see your content and see you do your thing, right? Some ways I've seen people be able to spin this off is by you know, using other people content, but like using it as a green screen and they share their two cents on that. That is something that you have to be careful with. But also remember when you're sharing content with other people, you have to give credit and all of that. And if giving credit and all of that is, a, is amazing, but if especially your business or your platform is not at that point where you're in a position to start sending your customers away from you without it hurts in your business it can just be a whole lot so i always say if you're going to be posting content from other sources let it be a collab it shouldn't be a case where your part of your content strategy is posting content from other people um when so when so must the link be added to the source used not sure if i understand this question can you elaborate on that um a little bit um, do you think Instagram is a good platform for real estate agents? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, th I think you, that's one of the categories on Instagram that's probably one of the most marketable. Yeah. Listen to me, guys. Instagram is a visual platform, you know, which is why I always say to people, invest in 
um, high quality images and really getting creative when it comes on to your visuals because real estate agents, a lot of my clients and my students are real estate agents. And let me tell you, when them sit down and create them content and all of that, I think it's absolutely amazing. The and, they, and they don't have to do much though, Talika. You're showing the property, you're showing the all oh, the features. You do I, I mean get creative, yes, but Jesus yes. please have a camera girl and I said this is the bathroom, this is Thank the living you. room, these are the features, be engaging, make sure mm -hmm. your video quality good, and you're halfway there. Literally, literally. And then the, the only tricky thing that I find that real estate agents struggle with is they get so caught up on the showing process mm -hmm. that in the real world, when you show them the house, you, you have the phone number, you have the email and you know, the conversation starts there. On Instagram, your content is going to show them, but they don't spend enough time telling people what to do next. next. They, don't yes. spend, they don't spend enough time telling people, okay, click my link in bio and do this or do that. They don't spend enough time showing themselves, working with potential clients, working with leads, yes. doing all those different things. So they have the content part done, packed, great. But guess what? You get people to look, but you're not sending this traffic to where it matters, which is your website and all of those different funnels that will help you get the sale. So Building yes, your Instagram, email list. Yeah, you're like, your email is and you're not retargeting really because you're you can show people new property and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But you see, uh, there's a real estate agent is in foreign. What she does mm -hmm. is she also shows how she closes a sale. So she'll show there them getting go. their keys, signing yeah. the final documents, probably mm -hmm. moving in for the first time, and then she comes back and show mm -hmm. you how they fix up the apartment and how they've made it into a home and she gets those persons to tell you how great she was in helping them find them dream home and give her a testimonial that's very powerful and effective too guys mm -hmm. and not just showing the property but showing what happens after talking about what the process is how it works what you need and most importantly how can they get in touch with you so you mm -hmm. can handle it for them very right. very important um so i agree with everything that katie said just now so next question using personal content in the beginning is best to have persons close so i mean essentially but personal by personal content i mean your original content not necessarily personally about you but your original content around your business is ideally best not just in the beginning but overall and then over time yes you can collab and, and different things like that um mine is fashion and designing nice love that for you um me wearing my pieces at events can start me off on ig well, um, well it can if you're if can. you're showing it off properly but let me tell you what i find with events and entrepreneurs and and the mistake that they usually make with events you have the event and you go to the event, you're showing the piece or and things like that. But guess what? Um, the conversation ends at the event. We never really, we don't really do a good job of um, getting people to just even as simply follow your Instagram page. You kind of get wrapped up in the conversation and then you forget to, again, send that traffic or send people to somewhere else where you can further continue marketing to them so just be very careful with that like yes that's a very good way of going about it but one you want to make sure you're sending people to your instagram and then also on your instagram page you're marketing effectively um, yeah um what you do what they do to telika is they go oh yeah you can you can look at you can look for me on one weird name instagram where most people can't spell because they have special spelling for them instagram yeah. name and then you don't you don't carry the person and show them the page or say, you know, get the look of scanning thing that Instagram mm -hmm. offers everybody and just say, yeah. hey, come out your phone, scan it. So you can instant, you can get the instant follow. You leave it up to them to go find you. Mm -hmm. uh, ask them for them telephone number and tell them, say you WhatsApp the link to them. That's one way of getting more personal Honestly. information that you can follow up on. So, yeah. So, did you answer the question already about when must a link be added to the source used? 
Um, for that, I didn't really. So, can we elaborate on question on that question? Are we talking about links for your ad? So, like whether or not you should add a link for the ad? I'm not sure. I'm following on this question. Yeah, you know neither. maybe what they meant. Guys, I've only seen two set of people asking questions. There's nobody else here out of the 80 out of you here that have any questions um, at all for Talika. I'm so I'm so I didn't know you guys were this knowledgeable. I mean, <laughs> we have guest presenters and you guys have no Maybe questions. We're a little shy. We're a little shy. You know? we're I mean, shy. well then drop it in the Q and A. You can drop it in the Q and A as anonymous. Well, oh, she say you answered the okay. link question for yeah. her already. Okay, all right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Amazing, fantastic. Some of fantastic. us heard it. Some of us heard it what before. Anybody want to jump on and talk directly to Telika? Maybe you have a, a brand on Instagram and you're looking for for um, more, maybe maybe a little bit of a personal advice from Telika. Anybody want to? You guys are not taking advantage of opportunities, you know. Sanja, you've asked a ton of questions already. Um, Kimberly Solomon, okay. Kimberly, go ahead. Hi. Hi, Hi. Kimberly. Hey Kimberly, what's up? Hey girl. Hey girl, what's poppin'? How you doing? I'm I'm doing good. Oh, I'm Telika's student in women's marketing code. However, I have a question for a Kimberly, different, if you are Telika's um, student venture. in women's marketing code, you don't I don't think I want you to use this forum when you already have direct access to Telika in a Kimberly. No, man, this is about something else. <laughs> That's funny. Sure, sure. sure. <laughs> Kimberly, right. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Don't know if you saw that. Sorry. <laughs> so I have a children's book and I'm seeking, which is self-published, and I'm seeking ways to get more visibility on that. Um, mm. I know that several persons will struggle with uh, the tactics that are necessary to mm -hmm. put ourselves out there after self-publishing because there's a lot of information online leading up to the launch. And then after mm -hmm. the launch, it's just like womp, womp, womp. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can drop any gems on that. So when it comes out, so launch, I always say for launch, we're talking about the before. So we're teasing people, the behind the scenes, things like that. But your continuous marketing after that is going to look or be very repetitive in the sense that you're going to, your marketing should be geared to telling people why they need to still be in this case, for example, the children's book, why they still need to be buying the children's book, who is it for and all of that. But your biggest, your biggest part of your marketing should be getting and or engraving using the book as a part of their daily lives or just, constantly showing people so either your customers or yourself um or the use cases of the books being used is one of the best ways to promote it and get it out there for not just books but also anything something that i find is we did really well with the launch but guess what we kind of we fell off because we underestimate the power of showing people what using it will be like, the use cases, the pictures, the, all of that. So for example, actually batching content or creating content around um, a parent reading to a child and the, the book is in frame, flipping through the pages, going live and talking about these things, all of the, why you started the book, all of these things are a part of your marketing. But also a very key part of it is in order to sell, you need traffic. So you can be doing all of these things and that's great and that's amazing. But if you don't have new people looking mm -hmm. at these things, you're going to find that you're not converting anybody. All righty. So Thank you so much. So it's all two things that are like super important. I hope that elaborated and this kind of made more sense for you. It did. Thank you so much. Yay, you're welcome, though. You're welcome. It's so nice talking to you, girl. You so nice too. After the end, you. After the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Too. Uh, Carl, Carl Taff, you can go ahead. Carl, if Carl is another student, if Carl is another student, 
Charles. Good morning, Miss Francis. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Madam. No, I am not a student, ma'am. Um, I'm just seeking some advice, per se. Um, uh, first and foremost, I'm not a social media detective, for want of a better term. I operate a small business where I offer service and sales in terms of motor vehicle importation. Um, I have an Instagram account, but you mentioned some of the points in terms of traffic and some of the, the do's and the don'ts. So I just wanted to, to get some advice from you how would be um, one of the best ways to get um, my business out there and persons um, coming to me because it's most of my sales are done through referrals um, and that's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. So that's totally fine. I, I got you. It's okay. So then to make sure that I'm following, um, you said that you said that you're doing your sales and marketing strategic. Can you kind of elaborate on what you said that you do? Sorry. You're hearing me still? Uh, yes, yeah, we are. Yeah, can right. you just re-elaborate on here? Yeah. No, I said I, I operate a, a motor vehicle importation company. So basically, um, I'll purchase motor vehicles from Japan, import them to Jamaica and sell them. Okay. But mm-hmm. in terms of that aspect of it, that may take a time for the for the capital to turn over. So I'm more interested in the service um, aspect of it. We are charge a fee. Persons have the cash. I purchase the vehicles um, from them, either from Japan. I have a supplier here in Jamaica that um, has them under a bonded warehouse where it takes a few days to process. So I'm more interested in the service aspect of it rather than the sales. I want to minimize the amount of sales because it takes a lot of capital um, okay. to do that and it takes some time mm-hmm. for it to turn over. But the, the, the service is more... Um, immediate and I could probably um, for a month sometimes I have five six customers who are processed but I want to increase that because I'll tell my business I charge about fifty thousand dollars to process it so you don't have to do anything I'll just do everything for you and hand over your vehicle to you but I also Mm -hmm. want to get it promoted um, better. So with doing that all right so for Instagram marketing, guys, it's very repetitive in the sense that, which is something that I talk about all the time. The pieces of content or how you promote yourself on Instagram to get different results and stuff like that is going to look very similar right across the board. And this is why every once you have these type of questions, the thing that I'm going to ideally tell you or give you is I am different content ideas to really get that going. So it's going to be the same thing, similar to what I said to Kimberly before. Are you getting people to look at your services or to see overall what you're selling? Because if you're not driving traffic um, to your page, to your website, or driving traffic overall, getting those new people to see your business, then you're going to have a very hard time with sales. So on a monthly basis, when you're marketing your business, one of the biggest things that should be a part of your marketing is how will you get new eyeballs, new people to see your business for that month? Now, the second phase all over again is going to be the same thing. Are you showing people the behind the scenes, the in-action process that's going on? So for example, like what Katie was saying earlier, when the real estate agent was showing clients being signed and getting their keys, in your case, are you showing yourself working with clients? Are you showing yourself the, are you showing your audience um, the behind the scenes what does you can even show people like a day in the life of what it's like for you to get to work different pieces of content like that will show people that you're in business ultimately customers want to see that you're in business you can educate them all day long about your services and what you do for them and all of that and that's great but the biggest selling pieces of content will be your content showing your audience that you're in business you're doing what you're supposed to do and not just that you're actually working with clients or customers and your promise is being fulfilled in your case your promises you're going to be helping these people import their cars and you're going to deal with the whole thing for them and they get their cars. Are you showing your audience enough that you're delivering on your promise? And for you, that can look like pictures with your customers or you going live and talking about the fact that, you know, you sold X amount of cars this week, sharing the stories around that. And 
the the thing is and i always say it is a snowball effect after that once people see that you're working with clients the feeling of oh i want this for myself too comes up and then that's when people start reaching out to you but also you find that your customers or your clients start readily um, coming to you um, and giving you the referrals and all of that, but sharing their stories with you because they now feel comfortable to do so because they see other people doing it, right? So those are going to be the two main things, making sure that you can get people to be constantly looking at your business. So like what we were talking about before, your collabs, your ads, all of those different things. But then the destination outside of educating your audience and, and you know, telling them about who you are, what you do, what you sell and why they should buy. You want to show them the inaction behind the scenes things to your business as well. And those are the things that will help to convert. So I hope that was very helpful. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. It was very helpful. Um, and, okay. um, listening from the start of the program for the for Kidian, um and you as well. Uh, I've realized that a lot of things that I was not doing. As I said, I'm not really one of those mm -hmm. social media geared, but I'm trying. That's, nice. That's why I signed up for the for the course. I'm trying to incorporate mm -hmm. that aspect of it as well. And, I, and I've learned a lot during your presentation. I know what course oh, thank you. the presentation. Um, yeah, it's you. like the biggest thing is I'm just gonna keep saying it's a skill. So don't expect that you or anybody else watching this presentation is going to get it on parts and get it right at the first time to be honest my first few videos um <laughs> my first videos when i just came on the scene they absolutely sucked it was horrible now i'm looking back at those videos like mm, i don't like that but then no again looking at my journey you know my camera quality improving and the way i talk improving and even just the things that i am selling improving it's a process. It's a gradual process. I'm happy yeah. that you, um, I was able to help. Yeah, it's a muscle. Um, it's a muscle everything. you develop, and you have to. The only way to develop it is by doing it. All right. Okay. Then. Thanks, Got Carl. You. You're welcome. All right. So, Loy, Loy. Hi, Loy. Loy, Hi, Loy. Hello. Like go quickly. We have some Q&A that we want to cover before Talika goes. Uh, okay. Going up to 12.30, Talika, that's okay? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so Loi, go quickly. Okay, so my question is kind of twofold. I have, my business is Moni's Voice. I create crocheted items for women and children who've been affected by domestic violence to help them to reclaim that joy and hope in their life. But I am having trouble merging the two because of the two different tones that um, that, that kind of naturally come up when I'm talking about those two, domestic violence and crochet. I do know I definitely want to keep the two together. However, I find myself, I don't know if it's because of the fear of <laughs> selling, but I find myself talking a lot more about um, the domestic violence aspect of it, teaching um, like how to, just talking about it in general, um, and not really, when it comes to like connecting the two, I kind of, I tend to shy away from that. So I would love to know if you have any tips or ideas on how to really get comfortable in with the, the voice or the messaging of whatever your business is, um, other than just constantly doing, repeating um, what, Mm -hmm. And then constantly talking about it, so to speak. Okay. I definitely get what you mean. So I guess my first question for you is in what way would the domestic violence and abuse parts of it be connected to the products that you're selling? Like how are the two connected or aligned? So the products that I make, I do toys and jewelry and um, home decor. And mm -hmm. it's their their main purpose is to make the the user or the buyer like feel the love that is in the product make help them to regain their self-confidence you know you wear something that's looking good you're feeling good when your surrounding looks okay. good you're feeling good as well mm -hmm. and just to help them to reclaim that self-confidence and that self-love gotcha 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 so what you're describing is your branding and your mission on one end and the product 
on the flip side, on the other end. And then what we need to do now is to connect that. So what the first thing I want you to get in the mind frame or get in the habit of thinking of is, all right, the what you described just now about feeling good and, you know, particular that this is particularly for, uh, well, not particularly before, but the whole th- reason why you started it had to do with, you know, just making sure that you could be there for women who went through domestic abuse and all of that. That's your story. That's your branding. That is something that you're going to sprinkle into your content. You can have it in your bio. You can have like a mission part of your website and stuff like that. As you talk to people in the DMs, um, you can talk about in what ways that you support this type of movement, that type of thing. But then on the flip side, when you're selling the product, we have to look at the product part of it selling the product in and of itself. So selling the product in and of itself now would look like your content strategy, the pictures that you're taking, um, the behind the scenes, different things like that. Now, considering that your mission is not on the personal side per se, but it's a very sensitive topic, I would say that you can sprinkle in pieces of content outside of um, the selling parts of the the crochet pieces itself and the jewelry and all of that, you can sprinkle in pieces of content where you collaborate with other people in this industry, therapists, psychologists, um, you know, advocates, and bring them on and have them talk about their stories or talk about just their experience or expertise on the topic. Also, it would be very beneficial for you to be able to show that you're supporting causes and movements around this topic, along with the fact that you're selling the product. So it's going to be a very intricate balance of um, having that advocacy side of your business, and that's really your brand. But we also want to connect that with the selling part. The selling part of the product in and of itself is going to look very similar to how it looks for any product-based business. The fact that um, you're taking these pictures of people wearing it, you're showing the behind the scenes of it being made. But in your captions, for example, not only are you talking about the size and how it fits and how great it looks, you're, you can also include a one-liner to say, remember that every time you purchase this, it's in support of this type of movement, or the goal for this is to help you feel and look amazing, X, Y, Z. So I want you to think about it as just one thing being your brand and your storytelling that, and that's going to be in every single thing that you do, whether or not you're actively trying to sell. And then the product in and of itself is what is going to be driving revenue for the business and therefore you market it as such. I got you. That's, got that's you? very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Amazing. You're welcome. Yay. Awesome. So just quickly. That was awesome. Awesome. The, awesome. That's really awesome. Um, Yes. Quickly going through some of the questions. What are your recommendations for copywriting under social media posts? <laughs> Why you ask the question like that? Stop your question. Because I'm not sure. No, I'm not. I was. I'm not sure what they're asking. As in how to oh. write the captions. I think the captions. Yeah, that's what I'm getting from it. Yeah. So writing the captions for your social media posts. Two things you're asking yourself is the intention what is this so similar to like what we were saying before what is this post supposed to be doing and different things like that but then the next thing would be what type of feelings are you trying to evoke what how do you want people to feel in this post keep in mind that it doesn't always have to be a long caption it can be a short one but really what are we trying to have people do? Are we trying to have them comment? Are we trying to have them click the link in your bio? What's the call to action that we want people to do? So those are the things that we're looking at. We're looking at the intention and we're also looking at the emotions that we want to evoke. So for example, if you're trying to get your audience riled up and excited, then we're looking at you know, using very exciting or happy words or phrasing or positioning. If we're trying to have them think and, you know, be pensive, then we're trying to use provocative words or one-liners or phrases that will make them singers. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly that. So it really depends on the intention and the goal of the post. All right. Trisha Carrara says, I would like to introduce another product line and wonder if I should create another Instagram page or use the same page. So I would say if the product... This product line, is it vastly different from your brand and your mission statements and like what your business is about? 
if so, then if so, your position, you can use the same page, but the positioning is going to be a little bit trickier. So then in that case, I recommend having a different page if it's going to be a different arm of your business. But if it's just another product that you're launching and it, it, it's in the same industry, it does the same thing, or it aligns with what everything, every other products in your business, then it can stay on the same page. I wouldn't recommend overcomplicating it and creating yeah. a different do you have, if you don't have a significant Instagram following base, should you grow your following base before advertising or is there a way to advertise to, I think they mean other audiences? Um, so if you don't have a significant Instagram following base, then that's going to be primarily the reason why you're advertising. Exactly. Right? So you, can still, um, you can still run your ads and stuff like that, but... Um, remember that the piece of advice I have for you is don't run the ad unless the page itself or your website is optimized. Optimized. So okay. definitely, even if you have a small following, you can have a small following and still have rock star, bomb, amazing, rocking content and your website is optimized. Run the ad. That's okay. perfectly fine. Also, collaborations will introduce you to other masses and allow you to tap into other audiences. So same rule of thumb. If the page or website is optimized, then yes, go for it. Okay. So before you came on, um, I was talking about um, some personas, some business personas that I would have noticed in terms of Jamaican business personas mm -hmm. and how we use social media. And one of them was the product focused persona where that person really only posts about their products or okay. post about mm -hmm. their services. They don't really do the trend thing. They want to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. They want to be seen as sophisticated and competitive. So they don't really do the trend thing because it may seem gimmicky to them. So mm -hmm. this person is asking, do you believe that that persona or that strategy works for wellness brands? Where they're only product focused, they read only post about their product, they use their captions as description for their product, they might include the pricing in there and the location, but they don't really engage outside of just showing their products and service. Um I I, I say it depends. <laughs> it depends. Because <laughs> a market no, the, the... can get away with that because of the type of brand they are. So the thing with wellness brands is all not all wellness brands are created equal. Some brands can get away with something that other brands cannot get away with. It's about establishing your brand persona and creating perceptions about your brand, which I think Morgan's Creek has done a really good job at. And so they've kind of established themselves as a particular personality or persona, not personality, persona. Does that work for every brand? No, it doesn't. Yeah, so I 100% agree with you. But here's the, here's the thing that I always say when it comes on to branding. Branding, it starts with you first, and then yeah. we go out. So then we always do this thing where we try to go out first and look at what everybody else is doing, and then before we go inside. So Morgan's Creek, that's what the owner or the founder probably wanted to do to begin with. That's how she wanted her brand to be perceived. And she's going to find people to match that or she's going to find her customer base through that, through her marketing and all of that from starting internally, what yeah. she would have wanted and all of that and then going out. The same rule applies for you as well. If yeah. that's the approach that you want to take based on your own, you know, how you want to run your business and stuff like that, then you can implement that type of marketing strategy to align with that. So inside first and then out and it works. Um, it's something so it's something that can work depending on your brand but as a marketing coach i'm going to share my two cents on this too i also think that even though that's your persona or your personality you can still have that human element and switch it up sometime because at the end of the day it's just going to work out for you it's just going to help you to establish a different type, a deeper bond even. But you know, to Talika, just right? to give you it some really more information, so much. Mm -hmm. just to give you some more information, she has a lot of offline marketing happening. 
Okay, so na, so na, that's the, that's that's the trick. Why that's the trick. Why would I never leave this? Why would I tell me that first? She's, yeah, I should have. That's what I'm saying. Let me, let me give you some more information because mm-hmm. she gets featured a lot in traditional media. She's on TV a lot. She's mm-hmm. in the papers a lot. They're always talking about her. She's won several awards and stuff. So mm-hmm. she can get away with that because, again, she has established that persona. And two, there's a lot happening for the brand offline as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. So that's like the yeah. biggest, that's another big thing too, right? So even like what I was saying before, if you have a lot of things happening for you in the background, you, how how you show up online, it will change or determine how you show up online a lot, right? So yeah. it really just depends on all those different things. I should have, I should have led with that. <laughs> all right. So this <laughs> is, so how do you balance your social media without being closed off? So you want to have a, you're a private person, but you mm-hmm. also may have a business or a brand. You may not want to kind of merge the two, but you don't want to be closed off either. What's the balance? How do you find that balance? Um, so Again, for it me, depends. <laughs> <laughs> but it depends. And then the next thing is, all right, so let me tell you how I do it, for example. So believe it or not, and I'll, every time I say this, people just don't believe me, but believe it or not, I'm actually very introverted and I'm a very private person extremely private person like if you see me in public if you if you've ever seen me in public before i'm very quiet like i i fade into the background but when you get me to talk about my business it's a whole new personality a whole new person a whole new thing on leash right so with that being said it's very possible even though that's the case you notice i'm the face of my brand so the thing is, I'm about, I'm going to open up this camera. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to even share you little tidbits of my entrepreneurial um, journey and things like that. And I'm going to keep it. I'm going to share the bits that are relevant to my audience. And that still aligns with my brand. Yeah. You'll never see me come up on WMC and be talking about, and be ranting about, for example, something that happened to me in traffic that day, unless it had some, some lesson, there. some kernel there's some that you lesson can or, Yeah, there's some lesson or there's something in there for the audience, right? So it's it's that intricate balance of being able to identify, once again, what your audience would find valuable, um, while at the same time, just setting boundaries for yourself. And you can even write this down. What are things I don't want to share or talk about on social media? And what are things I am comfortable about sharing um, or talking about on social media? You don't have, I always say you don't have to be the face of your brand, but somebody got to be the face of your brand. So you don't have to be the face of your brand and you don't have to be personal and all of that to have a successful business. But guess what? There should be another group of people, your customers or your ideal customers um, who should be the face of your brand. So your photo shoots, your pictures, the images you use, all of that is also a part of your branding and also can be considered as a face of your brand. So it's it just really depends on what you want to do and how you want to navigate the space, to be honest. All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna let Talika go. Um, Talika stayed way over the time, and we really, <laughs> we really appreciate her staying with us, answering questions, going through again. Talika's always great presentation, great insights. Uh, we really appreciate it, guys. The questions in the Q and A, I'll answer or do my best to answer. But you can always find Talika online. She can never <laughs> have enough followers. So please go and find her online. Talika, can you drop your, your links? Yeah, um, I can drop my handle really quick. So actually, yeah. I wanted to kind of talk about that for a little bit. So five sure. minutes. I'm gonna dip. Go um, ahead, go ahead. Client call to hop on really quick. So um, <clears throat> so really quick, guys, here's just um, a quick presentation of how we can work together. Okay, so I have the WMC coaching program currently. So what that entails or what that does for you is you have your Instagram page audited and, you know, finally learn what's getting in the way of attracting your ideal customers. You get the, and of course, other elements like converting followers to customers and building your profitable community. We have the WMC client portal that's a part of that. So with that is... And you're going to learn more about it, but I offer courses. And so when you join the coaching program, you get access to a very private 
course, so to speak, that has videos and tutorials that kind of help you move along the coaching program as well, based on what we discussed and different things like that. You won't find these videos anywhere else. It's literally just for clients. So even if you're a student, you've you wouldn't have you would have never seen these videos before. Um, so work with me closely, of course, and get actionable steps for your business. So you get your very own workspace with actionable steps that you can track, manage. I'm going to be holding you accountable, following up with you and all of that to make sure you're doing these different things. And the investment amount for that is 150 USD for your first two hour session. And there is a discount if you have a follow up um, two hour session or even a one hour session. Now, for my people who are more into the courses and, and things like that, and you want to have, you know, this evergreen, an evergreen course available that you can log into at any point in time, then it would be the WMC full course. So in that course, there's 10 major lessons, but the main ones and the crowd favorites in those lessons are, or in this course is how to create an Instagram content strategy that sells. Um, how to properly sell on social media without being salesy, how to build a powerful social media marketing strategy, and then, of course, learn how to leverage and use your Instagram insights, which is available or the investment amount is 75 USD for that course. You have access to it for a full year. So that covers that for everything. Um, Kelly, was there anything else that you wanted me to do? Is that something about links? Oh, let me no, just yeah, drop your drop window. your links. Drop your links. Guys, I will answer the QA questions that's there. There's a conversation happening in the chat about meaning faceless and showing your hands. Guys, listen. There are so many ways you can market on social media and other platforms. You can choose to be centered where you're centering yourself in that market, like Talika. She's the face of her brand. She embodies her brand. People come to find out what Talika have to say next, what funny reels she's posting, even though I'll be a drip up, but what funny <laughs> reels funny. Um, she's posting. Uh, and I think Talika is a personality-driven brand. Okay? You come for the personality, you stay for the information, um, and you're getting the best of both worlds, right? You have a ton of other brands who you never see the owner. You hear the voice, you see the hands, as Anika says, but you've probably never seen the owner, and they have millions of followers. All of that, guys, depends on what is the strategy you are using um, and what platform you are using because a, a strategy where you're not showing your face but you're probably showing your hands it probably won't work on instagram but it sure will work on a youtube especially if you are creating something or building something or showing people how to do something tangible that will work but if you don't have a tangible product but you really only have a service it may not work so well for you right you may have to include people in it somebody showing you explaining to you how this thing works may be best it really depends on what is the product or services you're offering how your audience interacts with that kind of content and then you build and you grow from there there's no one size fit all and tell you, neither tell you myself can tell you what exactly you should do because we don't have all the information to be able to tell you what will work and then you have to also pay attention to the market you're in would that work in a jamaican market if your audience is mainly in jamaica probably not because jamaica fast and love in a people business and loves the things so showing them your and alone may not work okay so it really depends on several variables guys but telika is an instagram marketing specialist so what she tells you is what will work on instagram so if you have an Instagram-based brand, visibility, not just for your brand, but you being visible and involved and engaged with your brand works 99% of the time. Okay? That's Very true. few people get away with not being visible and in their brand, especially if you're a small business or a small brand because people buy decision-making power nowadays is not yes my camera is off I'll, I'll come back on when our guest leaves Kenya, i'm gonna hop off i have yes my thank you so much to i really appreciate you
for sure okay, thank you for, for sure. having me guys have an amazing day guys please go and follow talika if you have any questions dm her if you're interested in any of our courses which are really good message her and she'll tell you what to do if you want a um, paid consultation with her she's also available you can find out when her dates are and all that good stuff if you guys want more personalized uh advice take up one of our consultation strategy um one of our consultation sessions and you can get that all right thank you talika all right guys what was i saying i was saying sorry i was off camera because usually when my guest is on i come off because they're the focus of the, the session, right? So I'm saying, guys, it really depends. There's a lot of variables, um, and depending on those variables is what will, um, what will help you determine what your strategy should be. I don't remember what I was saying. My mind went. All right, so let me quickly go through some of these questions. I struggle with comment to I struggle with the comment to push a concept more. Can you elaborate some examples on how one could make the most of their content and push it to get the intended result? Is it repeating content, presenting same content differently, doing adverts on the content? Uh, I'm not I'm not quite sure if I understand the question clear, but in terms of pushing your content more, I think it means being more structured with your content, being more deliberate in how you deliver that content. And that's what we were talking about earlier, Dana, when we were talking about creating themes around your content, um, showing people different aspects of your business, showing off your products in a particular way, being more consistent. All of that stuff goes into... Be, um, intentionality around how you present your product creating a particular experience for persons when they come on your page um creating perceptions around your product whether it's you're going to take the nostalgia route or you're going to take the culture route or it depends on how you are going to communicate the message of who you are as a brand as a business and what your brand and business represents that is what the key is if you can figure that part out you can you is literally a dog whistle to your audience once you can figure that part out right but how it happens in terms of the apparatus is going to be dependent on you if you have content that you can repurpose go ahead and repurpose it. but i think we need to get a lot more intentional about how we plan our content and how we deliver that content adding variety also works sometimes images sometimes reels sometimes videos sometimes tutorials sometimes behind the scenes sometimes a conversation with something sometimes you know different different adding variety can spice things up so for you dana you may want to have a conversation with an interior de decorator um and have them use your pieces in a, in a, in a, in a space. You take a, a photograph of it. You have them say why they put this piece there and why this piece um, is good in this space, blah, blah, blah. You can do content like that because sometimes people are looking for advice about how to decorate their space. And they're looking for novelty items or items that they can use to decorate the space as well. And so you providing that information is also another reason for them to come to your space. So what I would say to you guys, I don't think you guys do enough research. And by research, I literally mean going on Instagram and typing in people that do the same thing you do, Afarin, and look at how they're doing it. Because there's a lot to be gleaned from how somebody else outside of your market is doing the exact same thing you're doing and what you can copy and paste. And I, we don't have to reinvent wheels when it comes to marketing, guys. I don't think anything that is new that has never been done before is about how, what can you adapt, sorry, adopt, adopt with an O, into your strategy to make it work for you. So every now and again, go on Instagram, type in a porcelain ceramic or ceramic makers or whatever, and look at how they talk about their product how they present their product and the type of content that they are creating. Look at the ones with the big follower numbers. That is the competitive analysis. Yes. Look at the look at the one with the big follower numbers. Look at the ones who always get written up in paper. Sometimes go on Google and type in porcelain ceramic makers and see what Google spits at you. Because based on what Google is telling you, what based on what the results are on that first page of Google, that is what Google is telling you is actually relevant to that audience. So use that. Do research, guys, and you should 
always be doing research. Research is not one time. Somebody says you use Google Trends page to get ideas as well. Exactly, exactly. Somebody says I often get anxiety when I'm supposed to create content to post for my business. Just get overwhelmed and feel burnt out. Any tips on how to prevent this? Yes, plan your content. That's one way, guys. I was right there. I get anxious. I don't know what to post. But you only you don't know what to post because you don't have a strategy in place and you're not planning properly. If you understand your audience and most importantly have a business plan, have an objective for the social media platform that you're on, have your content pillars laid out, have your topic clusters done, it sh it should take away some of that anxiety. Um from the content creation process so you have to have if you're kind of that if you are if you're that kind of person for us because i'm that kind of person we we'll have to be very strategic and we have to plan things out right get a little notes up when ideas come to your head you jot it down and make that a part of your content ideation process uh how do you know which post to turn into ads you can create content just for ads or you can boost a post for ads. The, the posts that you boost for ads are the posts that probably are already doing well. The engagement is high. And that should tell you that this is something that is relevant to this particular audience. So you boost that to just expand the reach. But you have, say for instance, Dana, you have a new collection coming out. This is why it is so important to plan things out and include campaigns in your plan. So for instance, you know that five months from now, Dana, you have a new collection coming out you want to already start putting the wheels of that in place you want to start talking about it you probably show your drawing or your sketch you probably you you want to start building out a proper campaign that can start out organic and then have components advert advertising components in it as well at certain points right so you're strategically placing ads at a certain point you don't want a situation that is after it done and you're ready for push out then you just start talk about it and I put on push ads right not on social media that does not work okay all right is instagram the best medium for luxury brand it's probably the best medium to promote your luxury brand right now but i don't think it best dep depends on who you're marketing to guys remember you're not choosing social media platforms based on only the features but the primary reason why you should be choosing social media platforms is because of where your audience is okay stop giving people extra work to do guys ain't nobody got time ain't nobody got time all right what do you think social media will evolve into in Web3? Rachel, I think it will evolve into platforms where we can actually create our own platforms on top of um, Web3 applications, where we can literally create our own, carve out our own spaces. And I think that's what, what's the name of that social media platform that is already, I think it's called, don't remember. I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to tell you guys what the name of it is um there's already a space that allows you to do that hive it's called hive it's called hive and you can literally create your own kind of social um space on these platforms i think that is what web3 that's what that's that's what the purported objective of web3 is to cut out the middleman which is instagram and cut out the algorithm and be able to directly talk to um your audience um all right guys guys you don't just put stuff on amazon and etsy and leave it and expect it to develop on its own you know you have to market it you have to push it you know um but yeah guys you, you have to make sure that you're telling people what what are the ways they can actually buy purchase yourself dana i think you would benefit from doing research on people and say how are they marketing their stuff not local people but foreign people uh well i th i think dana it was only last year that that amazon um included jamaica on their list of sellers 
So I think that may have been the reason why they weren't accepting you before. So I'd probably resubmit because it was only last year they started accepting Jamaican sellers directly, directly. Um, yeah, I think you can use traditional Amazon. I don't see why not. I think you should just create a store. I've seen, I've seen people do that. In any case, guys, gotta go. I'll see you guys over in the WhatsApp group. Let me know what your scores are. We're going to discuss the answers in class on Monday. Please don't stress yourself about it, but I would encourage all of you to attempt the quiz, okay? All right, guys, if there are no more questions, I gotta go. Bye.